to the cloud. Hold on. Is it recording? I don't know. It must be recording to the cloud. Okay, good. So now I'm going to share and you get to see my messy screen for just a second. And then we're going to get started with Matt Morris. I'm so excited for you. Here is All right, awesome. One. Welcome everyone. Excited to have you on our goal setting workshop for 2022 and i will tell you this is uh really my favorite part of the year i mean uh i don't know about you guys number one i love christmas i love the holidays um but you know i think really why it's uh my favorite part of the year is because the new year is upon us and so i have had kind of the same uh the same system now for almost 20 years where I take some time out. I usually spend about two weeks or so uh, refining my goals and my game plan, really creating a roadmap for the coming year. And so I am in the middle of this. Uh, just started, uh, gosh, about three days ago, I started the process. And so um, what I want to do here is I'm going to run through and just kind of give you guys my process, you know, the process that I go through every single year. It's a process I've done, like I said, for almost 20 years. And, um, you know, I, I genuinely believe it is one of the reasons why I've been able to have a pretty decent amount of success over the last 20 years. And, you know, I, I wanted to hold this specifically to you know the subscribers to my list and so forth just because you know the reality is everyone wants the new year to be better right i mean if you ask everyone like hey who wants uh next year to be way better than this year everyone raises their hand it's like yeah we all want it to be better but if you were to really ask yourself and you guys can let me know in the comments um, if I were to say, you know, at the end of 2021 here, how much more money are you making at the end of this year compared to the end of last year? How much more freedom do you have at the end of this year compared to the end of last year? How much more abundant are your relationships at the end of this year compared to the end of last year? How much fitter, healthier are you at the end of this year compared to the end of last year? And you know, unfortunately, if you look at multiple categories, 99% of people at the end of this year are going to say about the same. Now, many of you, like I know I'm speaking to the choir. If you raised your hand, if you uh, are attending this workshop, you're an overachiever. And so I salute you for that. And so our numbers here are going to be a little bit higher. But I think we all agree we can stand to improve not just how much more money we're making, but virtually every single area of our lives. And I'll tell you my commitment uh this year is the same as last year is i want to be a different person by this time next year you know uh, how many of you have kids if you have kids in the chat let me know um let me uh hold on hold on let me check here uh there we go all right we got kids now you'll notice this if you're a parent um, how many of you can relate to this where, you know, like my son, as an example, he's eight years old and he's a totally different kid than he was at, uh, hold on one second. He's a totally different kid than he was two years ago. Anyone relate to that? Like my daughter is 12. She's about to turn 13 in January and she is a totally different kid than she was two years ago. The 12 year old version of her is totally different than the 10 year old version of us. But somehow when we become adults, it's like Groundhog Day. We're living the same year, year after year after year. Some things in our life may change, but our overall success stays about the same. And so my commitment is the version of me that you see right now is a totally different version than you'll see next year. And so I'll plan on doing another one of these goal setting workshops next year and you'll see a difference. Right. And that's my commitment every single year is not being the same. And some of you are, you know, have, have seen me before. Some of you may be new to the list and, you know, you're seeing me for the first time, first workshop that you've done with me. And so um, I'm not going to spend much time on this, but I've been involved in the network marketing profession for the last 26 years, um, have been blessed to build organizations that have grown to two and a half million customers over $50 million earners in my organization. Uh, the teams have produced over $3 billion in sales. And so it's been awesome. I've been blessed to travel to over 80 countries around the world. I've spoken to audiences. 
And uh, uh, let's see, six out of seven continents around the world and 36 different countries have you know, been on different stages. And I will tell you, I never imagined, like it is almost hard for me to even like imagine that that was possible because of how I started. Now, I know a lot of you are at different phases in your career. You know, I, I coach everyone from beginners in network marketing to, you know, seven figure earners in network marketing who are looking to take their business to the next level. And uh, my story, I never would have been the person who you would have looked like you would have looked at and said, man, that guy is going to be a top earner one day because, um, you know, I got started at 18. I had a cute waitress, uh, was working as a banquet waiter for minimum wage. I had a cute waitress who asked me uh, towards the end of the night as we're like serving dessert and coffee. She said, hey, you ever think about being in business for yourself? And she was pretty cute. I still remember the black skirt she was wearing <laughs> and I wanted to build rapport with her. So I said, absolutely all the time. And so she said, why don't you write your number down and we'll talk business sometime. And I was like very excited to talk business with her. So I gave her my number and uh, she called me, uh, I think it was the next night she calls me and invites me to the Hilton hotel uh, to talk business. And I'm like, all right, hotel, cute waitress, cute girl, <laughs> uh, business, I'm in, right? And so I show up at the hotel and she meets me in the lobby and says, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you can make it. Let me introduce you to some of my colleagues. <laughs> and I'm, I, at the time, I didn't even know what the word colleague meant. So she introduces me to several other people. She brings me in, sits me on the front row of a network marketing meeting. And I saw this guy gets on and he starts drawing circles and he talks about leveraged income. And my mind was blown. It was like, oh my gosh, this is my opportunity. And so I didn't get what I came for, but I got you know something better. And that was my first exposure. And um, I'll tell you, I like, I remember going home that night thinking, I can't believe they're the only company that does this. Like I literally thought they were the only network marketing company in the world. That's how you know green I was when it came to uh, to network marketing. And I quickly found out like I'm the last to know, right? I mean, there's uh, tons of network marketing companies out there. I just had no idea. And you know, I was very, very excited. And I'll tell you, I was like, went to the trainings, I went to the meetings, and after two years, I had three people in my, uh, I had sponsored three people, uh, two of which I paid for to get in. One was my mother. I never even told her she was in. The one guy that actually paid his way in was a waiter friend of mine. He had been drinking before the presentation, um, signed up, quit the next day. So, you know, two years in, I had one person in my group. It was me. That was it, right? And it, it was frustrating, right? So I joined another company and I'm like, this time I'm really gonna make it work. <laughs> and um, I didn't make it work. I joined another company and I'm like, this time I'm gonna make it work. I didn't make it work. And so like three companies later, I finally am like, I'm totally out of money. I'm $30,000 in debt. I took a job selling swimming pools in Southern Louisiana <laughs> where they uh, would set up lead, give me leads. and so. Um, ended up living out of my car. And I don't know if any of you have lived out of your car before, but um, <laughs> living on the road a couple days in, I uh, realized I had developed a bit of a bathing problem. So uh, my car started smelling. And uh, I remember going to a truck stop and asking the guy behind the counter, like, well, truckers shower at truck stops, right? And so I said, well, hey, how can I use your shower? And he says, well, you fill up with 100 gallons of fuel. <laughs> I'm like, well, my Honda Civic will take 10 gallons. And he said, I'm sorry, the showers are for truckers. And so I walk into the public bathroom and it was a small bathroom and the door locked on the inside. <laughs> and so I locked the door, I took off my clothes, I bathed from the sink. And that was my regular routine every couple of days. And some of you maybe heard me tell this story, um, had a defining moment one night and um, had been maybe three days, maybe four days since my last gas station bath, uh, pull into this little town where I had an appointment the next day. I uh, drive around, I go, there was one uh, gas station in this town, they were closed. So I'm like, ah, all right, well, I'll go park and after my appointment tomorrow, I'll go uh, shower. So I pull into a church parking lot, 
And I always parked in a church parking lot because I felt like a criminal would feel guilty carjacking me in a church. <laughs> so I uh, pouring down rain that night and I go and I try to sleep. Now, normally the rain helps me sleep that night. I can't sleep. Some of you know why already. <laughs> Let me know if you've heard this story. Let me know in the chat. Um, I can smell myself. And I remember thinking, man, if I go into this appointment tomorrow smelling like I smell now, there's no way they're buying anything. So I'm like, man, what do I do? Raining outside, I figure, what the hell? So I take off all my clothes, I grab my bar of soap, I go into the middle of the church parking lot and I begin my shower. Now, if you've showered in the rain, you know there's no concentration of water like a shower head. I'm like, man, this is gonna take all night. Um, <laughs> there was no gutter on one side of the roof. So I literally showered underneath the gutter runoff from the roof of the church. And so I get back in the car, I dry off, put my clothes back on, and then I have, how many of you have ever had a come to Jesus talk with yourself, right? Uh, where I kind of like took inventory of my life. And I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm $30,000 in debt. I'm homeless. I'm living out of a, I'm six foot three, living out of a little Honda Civic. Um, lonely. I got no career options going. I'm just showered naked in a church parking lot. Something has got to change. And, you know, they say there's two motivators in life, the desire for pleasure, and then the avoidance of what? what, what what's the other in the chat? Let me know. Let me know. The avoidance of pain. You got it. And we know the avoidance of pain is a much bigger motivator. <laughs> and so I, uh, you know, it was really that moment in my life where I was like, Matt, you have got to get yourself out of this situation. And I remember I have a journal. I still have this journal today. And uh, it's crazy going back and reading that because I'm such a different person today than I was back then because of all the growth. But I just committed. I said, I will do whatever it takes. Matt, do whatever it takes to change your life invest in whatever you have to invest in to change your life. And I committed to myself that I was going to be a massive success. And at the time, it was miserable living out of my car, but sometimes we have blessings in disguise. And some of you can probably relate to this where today I'm amazingly thankful because I was kind of like the dog on the porch. And uh, if you don't know the dog on the porch story, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you real quick. It's something that I've uh, told a thousand times in network marketing presentations, but I was like the dog on the porch. And so this is a, a Texas story. Uh, you know, we tend to be a little country sometimes in Texas. And so there's an old man sitting on his rocking chair on a big wooden uh, patio in the front of his house. And his neighbor walks over and his neighbor, as his neighbor's walking over, he hears the old man's dog that's sitting next to him. And the dog's like whining in pain. It's going, ur, 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 ur. and so the neighbor gets a little closer. He says, sir, why is your dog howling like that? The old man looks down at the dog. Ur. He said, oh, he's sitting on a nail. <laughs> the neighbor said, well, why didn't he get off the nail? The old man looks down at the dog, looks back at the neighbor and says, well, I suppose it don't hurt bad enough yet. And so, you know, here's what I realize is like, how many of you are sitting on a nail in life? Like I was sitting on a nail, but it didn't hurt so bad that I would get off the nail. And, you know, when I'm homeless, living out of my car, showering in church parking lots, the nail finally starts poking me in the butt so hard and the pain got enough that I made a decision that my life would change. And I decided shortly after that, it was like, I'm making a commitment that I am going to be a massive success. And I didn't know how, I just knew that was the decision I was making. And I decided to get back into network marketing um, shortly thereafter. And when I got back into network marketing, the way I looked at it was, I'm going to make a commitment to being a network marketing professional. The same way a doctor studies medicine, the same way a lawyer studies law, I'm going to study network marketing. I'm going to get an education on network marketing. And I'm just going to tell you what I, like, I believe is one of my biggest not so secret secrets to success. For the last 20 plus years, I don't know anyone in network marketing that's invested more than I have. I mean, I know there are people out there who have invested more, but 
I invest, I mean, a hundred thousand plus a year on coaching, on mentoring, on events. I mean, I've just, I finally got to the point where I was like, you know what, if a doctor will invest and I don't have the stats, um, you guys, uh, when you, uh, when you subscribe to the workshop, you got a copy of my book, zero to six figures. And I've got all the stats. I actually put it in here, but the average doctor comes out of medical school. I think it's $174,000 in debt. Uh, the average lawyer, it's over a hundred thousand dollars in debt that they come out. And I just remember thinking, wow, if I've got to go a hundred thousand dollars in debt, in order to get the knowledge and the skill to be a top earner and make several hundred thousand dollars a year, have residual income, leveraged income, and I can actually own my life, unlike a doctor or a lawyer, then it would be worth that investment. And that's just what I've done now every single year. And it was a quote I heard from Ben Franklin years ago, if you empty your wallet into your mind, your mind will fill up your wallet. And, you know, so many things that I've learned over the years. And, you know, one is uh, the concept of modeling. And this was what I got when I was living out of my car. I listened to a Tony Robbins cassette and Tony told this story. It was, I believe, unlimited power. And I had listened to it before, but how many of you have listened to something and it just wasn't the right time in your life, right? Because I was so hungry, because I was ready to get off the nail, I listened to that same audio with a new set of ears. And he said, the secret to success is fairly simple. It's modeling. If you want to have a lot of success, find someone who's had a lot of success, figure out what they did, do what they did, and you can have a lot of success yourself. And I was like, all right, um, let me start modeling other successful people. And here's the distinction I didn't make until a while later. But what's very, very important is not just modeling the things that people do but modeling the thinking that other people have. And so I'm going to go through with you guys, I'm going to go through a goal setting process. And that I would consider to be fairly tactical. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time going through the tactics of goal setting, right? I'm going to share some basic principles. But more than anything else, what I want to get across is the thinking that's led to massive success. And it's just things that I've learned from all of my mentors over the years. And I want, so I'm going to talk about philosophy and I'm going to talk about thinking. Yes, I'm going to get into the tactical side, but I also think it's important that we understand that we really get the philosophy of the wealthy. And I want to share with you guys um, something I heard uh, recently. And it is essentially, the difference between poor people, the middle class, and the rich as it relates to the purpose of money, okay? And so this is something, if you're taking notes, write this down, because this is one of the most important distinctions when it comes to wealth. And I wish someone had told me this 15 years ago. Um, I know many of you are not making big money right now. Some of you are making big money. I wish I had heard this 15 years ago, because if I look at... Uh, I went through back several months ago and I just looked at my tax returns and I looked at my income over the last you know, 20 years and I've made over $20 million in income. And had I learned this, I would be a much wealthier man than I am today, okay? And so this is something that is gonna be important for you. And so what is the purpose of money? Like what do the poor, the middle class and the rich believe the purpose of money is? And so let's start with the poor, okay? The poor believe the purpose of money, okay, is to pay bills and to buy things. My amazing handwriting, okay? So this is what the poor believe the purpose of money for. It's to pay bills and to buy things. Essentially, it's to survive, okay? And so this is what the poor believe money is for. So what are the middle class? The middle class believe the purpose of money, and they have a little bit better of belief, but it's this, it's to buy assets. Now, they also want to buy things and they want to, you know, pay bills and things like that. But their purpose of money, like if I want to get ahead, 
the middle class are going to buy assets. And so they're going to buy cars, they're going to buy houses, maybe a vacation home. Uh, the middle class also tend to believe that the purpose of money is to save it for a rainy day. Okay. Now, here's the challenge is most of the middle class think of their house as an asset. Right. And most people, unfortunately, are going to get the biggest house that they possibly can. And they think they have an asset. Uh, they're going to get the nicest car that they can afford, the nicest car that they can finance, thinking that that's an asset. Now, a car is definitely not an asset because it's a dep it depreciates. So on a balance sheet, you might consider a car an asset. I consider an asset something that actually makes me money. Right. So I don't look at a car if it's a home that I'm living in. I don't consider that an asset. The rich don't really consider that an asset because it's not making you money. It may increase in value, but you're having to make your mortgage payments all the time. Now, if, if you have a vacation home that you're not putting on Airbnb, I wouldn't even consider that to be an asset. And listen, I had a vacation home. And so, um, and I used to have this philosophy, okay? And this is the what the middle class believe the purpose of money for. And so let's look at, compare that to the rich. The rich believe that the purpose of money is to do this, multiply. So the rich believe the purpose of money is to multiply it. So it's to buy, you know, cash producing assets, education, to invest in businesses. So if you were to compare the two, the middle class versus the rich, the middle class are gonna save money so they can buy things, buy assets, the rich are going to invest money so that they can multiply your money. And so this is what I wish I would have learned 15 years ago, 20 years ago, when I first started making really good money in network marketing, I had the middle class mentality as it relates to money. Dropping my pen here, I'm getting fired up. Had I had this knowledge for the last 20 years that the entire purpose of money is to multiply that money, make multiplying your money your number one priority and you'll be a very rich person. And so <laughs> what happened with me is I started making really good money. And so I started buying nicer cars. I started buying homes. I bought a vacation home. Had I had the philosophy that I've had the last few years, uh, last number of years, when I really got this down, I would have been investing. I typically invest well over half of my income I put into investments. I put significant over $100,000 a year in education because education allows me to multiply my money because I get better and better and better at marketing, at speaking, at running a business, at leadership and all that. And so this is something, again, I wish I would have heard many, many years ago. And so that's a piece of philosophy that I think is, uh, is important for everyone. And so let's move on to some uh, goal setting, right? And before I get into the goal setting, I just want to say this, like, I want you guys making way more money. I want you hitting the top rank in your network marketing company, all right? But I also want you to be successful in all areas of your life, right? And so when we go through the goal setting process, I don't think I printed mine out, um, but this is what I'm going through in each category of life. So I have a network marketing goal, I have my business goal, I have my financial goal, I've got my learning goal, my growth goal, um, which is something that most people tend to forget about. Um, you know, personally, I've been of the mindset that, you know, success is all about constant, the, the Japanese Kaizen, which is the Japanese art of continuous and never ending improvement. As soon as you stop growing, you start dying. We don't, we never stay the same. We're always spiraling up or we're spiraling down. And so it's why every single year I have a growth goal. I'm writing out like, these are the courses that I want to go through, the books that I want to read, the mastermind programs that I want to join, right? And so setting those goals, setting health and fitness goals, right? What is my body fat percentage going to be? What's my weight going to be? Uh, the action plan behind it, right? And as we go through this, and again, I don't need to spend a ton of time on this because um, chances are like this is stuff that you can get, um, you can do a Google search and get this. And so um, I'm just going to very quickly talk about this. So SMART goals. 
Okay, so when we're setting our goals in whatever category of life that we're setting the goals, and I'll talk about the different categories here in a second, just make sure that you're following the SMART formula. And so uh, S, specific, okay? It needs to be a specific goal. So at the end of 2022, if you're setting your yearly goal, and we'll talk about breaking these down in a minute, it needs to be very specific, not I'm going to be earning a full time income by the end of 2022. It needs to be, I will be earning $80,000 a year, uh, $100,000 a year, $8,000 a month, $10,000 a month. Make your goal very, very specific. Next, it needs to be measurable. Okay, meaning you can actually quantify it. It needs to be specific and measurable so you know when you've hit it. Okay, next, it needs to be achievable. Okay, this is something that <laughs> I uh, like I'm big on setting big, hairy, audacious goals, right? Um, but if you're setting a goal that's so far out there, you can't even imagine it being true. I would say to pull it back a little bit, have it be a stretch goal, but it should be something that you're achievable. And we'll also talk about breaking it down. So it may seem a little bit out there, like a little too much of a stretch, but then when you break it into uh, quarterly goals, it becomes a lot more uh, realistic. Next, it needs to be relevant. Did I spell that right? Relevant. I think it's relevant. Who knows how to spell relevant? I think I got it right. Okay. <laughs> Meaning it's important for you, right? It matters to you. And then finally, a timeline. Okay. So a lot of times when I'm setting my yearly goal, it needs to be time based. So there needs to be a deadline. Like you will be earning this amount of money by this time frame. So a lot of times if I'm setting different goals, like a health and fitness goal, I'm going to say like, I'm going to be weighing this amount by this specific date. My body fat will be this by this specific date. Okay. So just make sure you're following the SMART formula. Now, here, let's get into, and, and this is just the process I've used for a bunch of years. Okay. Let me clear that. And really, three parts to every goal. So, number one is the goal itself. If you look at my goals, these are exactly how it's laid out. So number one is the goal itself. Number two is the purpose behind the goal. Now, this is where most goal setting goes wrong is when you're doing the goal setting process, you don't have a purpose, the why, the reason why you must achieve the goal. So for every goal you want to ask yourself is what why must i achieve this goal like why is achieving this goal a must for me and i'm not saying that you need a why that makes you cry for every goal now this is getting into some network marketing training um but i i believe there's an art and science to getting new people started in network marketing like one of the reasons why so many network marketers fail is because they don't have their sponsor, someone upline doesn't effectively coach them. Okay. And so I'll just tell you my process when I'm getting a new person started is I want them to set a goal. Okay. The reason why I want them to set a goal is if we go through behavioral science and let me move this. We need to understand, and I want, I, I'm going to segue here a little bit because it's important that we understand behavioral science like why we create and how we create success and so we got to look at where does success come from okay some of you have heard me do this some of you are i know part of my inner circle program and you guys know this like you know the back of your hand okay so uh this will be a recap for some of you so where does success come from well success comes from actions okay so we know that if you do the right things, take the right actions consistently, that's what leads to success. Well, we, where do actions come from? Because here's where, if you don't understand this, this is how you get caught in the, the goal setting loop of failure, where how many of you ever relate to this, where you set a goal, you get excited about the goal, and then you set an action plan behind the goal, which is, by the way, the third section is the action plan. Okay, 
So you need to have a goal, the purpose behind the goal. This is the fuel. This is the motivation behind it. And then your action plan. Well, your actions. So here's the goal setting process is you set a goal, you get excited about it. You have the action plan. You don't take the actions. You beat yourself up. You get frustrated. So you reset the goal, set, reset your action plan. You don't do the actions. You beat yourself up. You reset the goal. Like this is what I went through for years until I really understood this. Okay, where do actions come from? Well, actions come from feelings. Okay, if you have the right feelings consistently, you're more likely to take the right actions. So what are the right feelings that we want? We want to dial in the right feelings for ourselves. Feelings of motivation, feelings of confidence, feelings of certainty, feelings of faith lots of different feelings that will lead you to taking the right actions consistently okay so this is where most goal setting fails if you don't understand how to wire yourself the right way then you don't take the right actions okay so where do feelings come from so feelings come from thoughts and beliefs now <laughs> Here's where, and I'm, again, we don't have time. I've got so much I want to cover with you. I don't have time to go in detail with this, but we are the only creatures that we know of. The humans are the only creatures that can think about what we think about, right? And so let me give you an example. How many of you have ever you know, been frustrated and you're like, you want to hit the next rank in your company or maybe a couple ranks from now, and like a thought that is in your mind consistently is i don't know how to hit call it diamond right that's a common you know high level rank in network marketing so i don't know how to hit diamond now here's what happens is like <laughs> that may be somewhat true for you but thinking i don't know how to hit diamond is that going to lead you to figuring out how to hit the thinking that hits diamond. So we got to be mindful of our thoughts, right? And mindful of <laughs> that our thoughts create our beliefs and our beliefs create our thoughts. And so you may have a belief about yourself that's very ingrained, right? And so uh, something that I talk a lot about called the law of consistency and commitment. And the law of consistency and commitment says that you will remain committed to being consistent with who you believe you are. Okay, this is your identity. Okay, your belief is essentially your, your identity. Okay, now the law of consistency and commitment. Again, it says we will remain committed to being consistent with who we believe we are. So here's the problem what i like who i believed i was my first few years in network marketing was that i was not a good communicator i was afraid of public speaking like i was never the popular kid growing up i had one girlfriend all through high school um because she was the only one that like told someone that she liked me and that was the only reason i had the courage to ask her out is because one of my best she had told one of my best friends that she wanted to go out with me and so i asked her out and i wasn't going to break up with her because man there was no other girl that had ever said she liked me right that was my level of confidence um i believed i was too young i believed i didn't have enough credibility i had this firm belief that money was really hard to come by why because i grew up with a single mom that was always working two jobs to work her way through college. Uh, she worked her way through law school, writing, uh, you know, typing up papers for people. Uh, we would like collect um, aluminum cans all the time, like in law in the school. Um, like we'd bring a trash sack and we'd go into all the trash cans and we'd get all of the uh, aluminum cans and then we'd sell the aluminum cans, right, uh, for extra money. So money was hard to come by we lived in a trailer park we upgraded to a garage apartment at one point we actually had a two-bedroom house which was really amazing um we were on food stamps i was the kid who had the free lunch pass in school like money was hard to come by and it was so ingrained in my mind because my mom she actually graduated law school when i was in um, high school and even as an attorney, like you think of an attorney makes big bucks, right? Well, my mom got a staff attorney. It was like a low level 
um, job as an attorney, basically doing paperwork, she still worked a part-time job three, four days a week selling Estee Lauder at, um, at the mall. Like she still worked two jobs, even though she was an attorney. So my belief is that money's hard to come by. I didn't have anyone who, that I knew was a wealthy. I had never, I don't think I'd ever met a millionaire. Okay. So that was so ingrained into my mind that became my identity. And what happens is until we change our identity, we will be committed to remaining consistent with the results that we have. And so what happens is, and I've seen it so often, I mean, in 20 years of being full-time, 21 years of full-time in network marketing, there's some people who uh, like will join and they have a lot of charisma, a work ethic, maybe they're really connected and they ended up having you know, quick success, but the law of commitment and consistency kicks in and they end up sabotaging themselves and bringing themselves down. See, there's two levels of motivation. There's positive motivation and negative motivation. We don't typically think of motivation as being negative. I remember reading uh, Richard Brooke has a great book called Mach 2 with your hair on fire. And it was the first time I made this distinction when I read that book. And he said that, you know, if your identity, your vision or your identity is um, inconsistent with who you believe you are, um, then you'll have motivation. OK, and it could be positive or negative. And so if <laughs> your identity is someone who makes $50,000 a year and you're making $20,000 a year, natural self-motivation kicks in and you're going to get up to $50,000 a year. Now, there's negative motivation as well. So if you start making $80,000 a year, if your identity, who you believe you are, is a $50,000 a year type person, self-sabotage kicks in and you'll bring yourself right back down to 50,000. So the key is you gotta take that identity and make sure the identity is always above the amount of income that you're earning. And so I've been blessed to earn a lot of money, um, you know, millions of dollars a year. And I understand that for me to get to a million dollars a month, I have to program my identity to be a million dollar a year type person. And when that happens, that motivation kicks in. So if you wonder, like sometimes we struggle with this self-motivation, you see other people who are naturally self-motivated. Why are they motivated? Because they've really figured out how to rewire their belief system to create a different identity. So the natural motivation kicks in. Now, if we wanna know, we could go deeper into this, where does our belief system come from? It comes from our programming. Okay, now there's three main ways that we're programmed. Okay, if you're writing notes, you can write this down. So the first main way that we're programmed is through our experiences. Okay, we have things happen in our lives and we create a meaning based on the thing that happened. Doesn't mean the meaning is correct, but we associate a meaning. We are meaning making machines. And so I, I'll give you an example, my father, left me um my father was an alcoholic committed suicide when i was 13 years old and um i lived with him at one point he had been in prison like you know not not the ideal father figure right and so when i was about 11 years old he dropped me off at the library i had a book report to do and he said call me when you're done i'll come pick you up it's a couple miles we had moved to north carolina um, didn't know the area very well. So he drops me off. I go do my book report. I finish. I go to call him. Ring, ring, ring. No answer. Ring, ring, ring. No answer. This is back when we had cell phones or not cell phones before cell phones. We had uh, pay phones. Right. And thank goodness I kept getting my quarterback. <laughs> and he's just not answering. And so eventually they were closing the library and the phone was inside the library. So I like I remember the worker locking the doors going, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, my dad's on the way. He wasn't really on the way. And so I'm outside, it's raining. And I was like, well, I guess I'll uh, walk home. So I walked, I ran home in the rain, a couple miles. Uh, thankfully, I, I knew the way home. And when I got in, my father was um, passed out drunk. Now that was an experience. I create, I immediately, I remember like it was yesterday thinking my father could care less about me. Like that was what I really like took on to believe. 
And so my father does, could care less about me. He doesn't love me. Hence, I'm not lovable. No wonder I had trouble with girls uh, all through, you know, growing up in my uh, early adulthood. Um, I created a meaning that I'm not worthy. Like I'm not even lovable for my own father. And so I carried that with me for a lot of years based on the experience that I had. Now, when I finally understood that nothing has any meaning until we give it meaning, then I decided to rewrite my history. And guess what? You can rewrite your history. <laughs> and so what is something positive that can come from that? Is, does my father, did my father really not love me? Mm. Well, what would be more powerful? It wasn't that my father didn't love me. It was that my father was, had a disease. He was an alcoholic. And so I chose years later to believe that my father, um, you know, loved me very much, but he was being strangled by this disease. Like he could not control himself. And so he did some bad things, right? What else would be positive from that? Well, if I look at myself, like why, why am I the way I am? I'm pretty independent. Maybe I'm independent because my father did things like that and I had to figure out how to take care of myself. Um, so my father gave me the gift of independence. See, this is about rewriting your history. And so what I would encourage you to do, and this is you know, a, a much longer process than we have time to go through, but spend some time thinking about like, why are you the way that you are? And what are the positive, like the things that have happened to you in the past um, that you perceived and maybe you've been holding on to as a negative for years, if not decades, what is the positive meaning behind that thing that happened many years ago? And, you know, so that's one is your experiences. What else is uh, your, your external programming? It's what other people have said about you. Um, you know, and unfortunately, you know, not all of us were raised in an environment where we had, you know, parental figures and family that were saying, man, you can do anything. Uh, you should go be an entrepreneur. Uh, you can do anything that you want, right? Most of us didn't have that kind of positive programming. Um, the most powerful way that we're programmed is our own internal programming. It's what we say and what we think about ourselves. And so understand that our thoughts uh, also lead to our programming. Our thoughts create our beliefs. And so the thinking that I had for a long time, and the reason why I failed for a long time in network marketing was I thought that I wasn't good enough. I thought I wasn't a good communicator. I thought that I was too young. I didn't have credibility. Like that was my internal programming. And so those thoughts, that internal programming led to reinforcing a negative identity. Now, I'm going to tell you something that I want you guys to get is we have two goals in life. We have conscious goals and we have subconscious goals. Now, your subconscious goal, listen, your subconscious goal is to keep you in line with your identity. Remember the law of consistency and commitment. You will be committed to remaining consistent with who you believe you are. Our subconscious is designed to keep us locked into this identity because that's where we feel comfortable. That's where we feel safe. Okay? So that's our subconscious goal. Then we have a conscious goal. Here's why goal setting for many doesn't work. And this is why I want to break the pattern for many of you. So that this year you achieve goals at a level you've never achieved them before. Okay. So we have our subconscious goal, which is to keep us in line with our identity. And then we have our conscious goal. Now, our conscious goal is to hit diamond. It's to be in great shape. It's to have six pack abs. It's to look and feel sexy. Now, we have our conscious goal, but then we have our subconscious goal, which is to keep us in line with our identity. Now, all the science says that the subconscious is infinitely more powerful than the conscious mind. Subconscious is infinitely more powerful than conscious. And so if you have two different goals, which goal wins? Is it the conscious goal or the subconscious goal? The subconscious goal wins every time. So here's what's key is to start changing the subconscious. 
It's to start reprogramming ourselves. It's to be conscious of the things that we're saying and thinking about ourselves that don't serve us. So when I understood this, when I got it, it was like, oh my gosh, everything I say about myself makes it more true. If you're writing this down, write this down. Everything you say about yourself makes it more true. You're programming your identity. Your identity, which is your belief system, leads to feelings, which leads to actions, which leads to your success. We can't just focus on the actions. We got to think about our feelings and we got to think about our belief system and recreate an identity for you that is powerful that will lead us towards our goals. And so when I became aware of this, I, I, I had to be aware like, oh my gosh, I'm saying I'm so broke all the time. I'm thinking I'm too young. I'm thinking I don't have enough credibility. And all of those things were making it more true. So step one is have the awareness. Step two is to change it. So instead of thinking, and I used to think I, like I wasn't very smart, I didn't understand what intelligence was. See, intelligence isn't your IQ. Intelligence, listen to me, intelligence is your capacity to learn. Your capacity to learn. And your capacity is, is like a muscle, okay? It's like working out at the gym. The more uh, bicep curls you do, the bigger your bicep gets, the more weight that you can lift. See, the more you learn, the more you study, the more you increase your capacity to learn. Your intelligence isn't static. You can increase your capacity to learn dramatically. So I believe that I wasn't very smart because I finished in the half of the class that made the top half possible. I finished in the lower half of the class. My grades were always about as good as the kid sitting next to me. I thought I wasn't very intelligent. The truth is I was amazingly intelligent because intelligence is based on capacity. The more you learn, the more you increase your capacity. Today, you can't convince me that I'm not a genius. And I'm not saying that to like, I'm, I'm not out telling people I'm a genius, but personally, it's what I believe to be true about myself, where I believed I was inferior to most other people in the past. Okay, so instead of saying like what I said all the time, gosh, I'm such an idiot, I started switching it around saying, I'm such an incredible genius. I'm such an incredible genius. Instead of saying I'm too young, I started saying, you know what? It's an advantage that I'm young. Older people will feed off my energy. If I have any amount of success, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out and inspire tons of other people. And here's just a quick sideline. My mentor, when I met my mentor, um, changed the game for me. Five years of struggle, met my mentor. He gave me so many different insights and stepping into my leadership and a system for doing business. I studied everything. I finally said, you know what? I'm just going to surrender. I, I've been trying to do it my own way for five years. I've been following like my upline. Yeah, they're successful, like more successful than me but they're really trying to figure it out themselves. Um, I finally had a guy that I could like learn from on a regular basis who had already made a million dollars. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna submit, I'm gonna be coachable. And he challenged me one day. He said, Matt, I think he saw that I was putting him on a pedestal. And he said, Matt, there's a, a book called Matt, The Magic of Thinking Big by David Schwartz. So I want, you to, I want you to read it. And I read it and he said, there's a quote in there. It said, it's good to observe the leader, learn from him, study him but never worship him. Never think you can't go beyond him because second best thinkers are invariably second best doers. He tells me that and he says, Matt, I want you to learn from me and I want you to learn from all the other leaders out there and mentors out there so that one day you can be bigger, better than all of us. Now, had I not submitted to being totally coachable, I would have just in one ear and out the other because like i never would have imagined i could go beyond him because on a scale of one to ten he was a ten the best i had ever seen i mean people hung on every word he said he was an amazing public speaker uh, good looking drove a big s class mercedes had big platinum rolex i mean uh was like a walking personal development book just spouting out nuggets of wisdom everywhere he went and i was like how could i ever be as good as him and immediately my mind shut down like there's no way i could be as good as him but he had challenged me he said i want you to learn from all of us and like the whole thing right and i was like all right so i gotta stay in the question if you're writing down notes right stay in the question so the question is how do i go beyond him how do i make as much money how do i make more money than him and it was like i don't know i don't know i don't know but remember <laughs> 
uh, uh, if you have a negative thought, it leads to a negative answer. So it was like, I can't think I don't know how, as long as you're saying, I don't know how, you're never gonna find the answer. So I'm like, all right, I know it, what is it? What is it, what is it, what is it? I stayed in the question and it took me a while. It wasn't like I figured this out right away, but here's what I finally came to. One is work ethic, like I can outwork him. On a scale of one to 10, if he's a 10 and I'm a four, if I work three times harder, I should be able to you know, sponsor as many people. But then there's a leadership component and all this other stuff, right? That factors into play. So I knew that wasn't enough. It wasn't just work harder. Like how many of you know, like, you know people who work really hard in network marketing, but they never seem to become a top earner. Like what's the difference? Working harder, yes, you have to work hard, but how many of you like, here's what I hated in network marketing is my upline would always say, go show more people. Just go show more people. And it was so frustrating because I knew the answer wasn't just show more people. Like, do most people need to show more people? Yes. But working hard is not always the answer. It's understanding um, a bigger picture. It's really dialing in your leadership. So here's what I finally came to. And this was one of the most transformational times of my life. This is what allowed me to go from five years of struggle to crushing it, becoming the number one earner in my company at 25 years old. Is I looked at him and it was like, wow, he is like good looking, charismatic, never met a stranger, uh, understands network marketing like the back of his hand, all of these things, right? And um, then I started thinking about me. And I thought, are more people like him or are more people like me? The reality is more people are like me. More people have failed in network marketing or have never had success in network marketing. Most people are afraid of public speaking. Most people are not God's gift to sales. Most people aren't walking you know, personal development books. Most people are intimidated. Most people think they're not good enough. And so that's what has been true for me. So if I'll just go out and have any amount of success, I can use that to inspire all the other people who are just like me. And I can relate to people on a level that he'll never be able to relate to people. And it was this aha moment, like, wow, all of this crap that I thought was holding me back is actually my greatest strength. And so I started going forward. And instead of trying to be Mr. Perfect, I would let people know, hey, I mean, a few months ago, I was living at home with my mom, or even when I was living at home with my mom, you know, and I've put in several people and I've made money. If I can make money doing this, imagine what you can do. And I'm showing people who are older than me. And all of a sudden, I'm inspiring people and they're getting started. And I just use that to like, like it was like a snowball effect. I started having more and then I'm making $1,000 a week and then $2,000 a week. And I'm just telling my story like I thought I couldn't do it because of this, 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 this. And other people who are like I am are going, wow, me too. And this kid can do it. And that's what like it was that distinction. It's the thing that you think is holding you back is actually your strength. Stop holding on to all these things thinking this is the reason why you can't have success. No, that's the reason you can. If you get nothing else out of this workshop, hold on to that because it's not the most polished speaker that makes the most money. It's not the best trainer that makes the most money, okay? So that was a huge distinction. And I'll tell you a moment where like another defining moment I got to the point where because I had just worked so hard, I'd done so many presentations. I did, I like, I got pushed to speak in front of people. I didn't want to, but I did it anyway. And I sucked really bad, but I did it so much. Eventually I got good. And I got to the point where I could like go through the whole presentation, no ums, no ahs. And I'd finish the presentation. I'd be like, yeah, I crushed it. And I noticed that my enrollment ratio seemed to like drop. And I was like, man, why would, and people just aren't enrolling. And I thought it was the company. Maybe like things have just gotten stale with the company. Maybe the opportunity's gotten a little old. Like, and, and here's what changed things for me is I did a training. It was in Minnesota. I did a Saturday training. I had a big group that had started growing there. And I went, I did a training and I felt like, man, I did this amazing training, right? And at the end, everyone's like cheering for me. And, you know, we finished the day and this lady comes up to me and I'm so thankful that she did this. Most people wouldn't have done this. And she said, wow, your training was really amazing. And I was like, oh, thank you so much. And she said, 
you know, if I can be honest, it was a little demotivating. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, I did this amazing training. How could it be demotivating? Like my purpose was to motivate. And she said, I was like, really? Why? And she said, well, I thought you were just this like average kid who was living at home with his mom. And, you know, and then you had all this success, but it's clear that you're a polished motivational speaker. <laughs> and it hit me. It was like, I don't need to be a polished motivational speaker. I need to be me. I need to talk about all of these things that I thought were holding me back. And you know what? I started changing. I started going back to like what was really working and my enrollment rate went right back up. It wasn't the company, it was me. Understand it's always you. It's all about dialing yourself in, getting your thoughts, your beliefs dialed in and then um, that's when results really manifest. Okay. So these are the three parts to every goal. And um, I'm going to talk about what really holds you back. Like the reason why most people don't accomplish their goals. I'm going to, I'm going to talk about that in just a second, but first I, uh, I want to talk about um, breaking goals um, into quarters. Um, and you guys should all have gotten my uh, Conquer Your Life system. Uh, we, there's been printing issues. We'll have a, a planner that I will, you know, we'll, we'll mark it at some point, but you guys have the PDF and the, the Conquer Your Life system. It is really the system that I've used for the last, you know, many years to manage my life. And when it comes to goal setting, um, it's setting the yearly goal, but how many of you can relate to this where you set a goal a year out and it's so far out, it's almost like you don't have motivation to take action now because the goal is so far out. And so that's why I started, like, if you look at your yearly goal, okay, so you got January 1, 2020, and you got December 31st, 2022, rather, not 2020. Okay. And it seems so far out, like by December of next year, I'm going to be here, but it's so far. So here's my recommendation is we break it into quarters. Okay. So this is just what I've done. It's how I've managed my network marketing business. It's how I've managed uh, my other companies, our company network marketer. We've had like eight, nine quarters in a row of growth. I mean, uh, the company's growing like crazy because we are setting quarterly goals so i'm breaking down like all right for this year we want to do this much in revenue or i want to hit this rank right well where do i need to be in q1 okay so this is q1 q2 q3 q4 and what seems impossible setting like a big goal here becomes very possible because you essentially you have four different sprints four different runs four different challenges if you will to get to the yearly goal and you guys can go through this in the the pdf that you received if you didn't get it you can email support at mattmorris.com we'll take care of you uh, but you should have already gotten it okay so breaking it down into quarterly goals that way it seems much more achievable now within each quarter there are 13 weeks on average for every quarter so my recommendation is Sunday, this is typically what I do Sunday before bed, I'm setting my weekly game plan. Like this is what I'm doing on a, uh, for this week. This is my goal for the week is to get to this level. Okay, sometimes you can't see the highest mountain out there because of the mountain that's in front of you. So climb a smaller mountain and then you can see further. Okay, so breaking it from quarterly into weekly. Um, and then, you know, as far as your, you know, network marketing, like what type of goals should be, should, should you be setting? Now, some of these are obvious. Some of these are not so obvious. Obviously it's your rank, your income. If you've got a goal of hitting whatever it is, maybe it's a diamond by the end of the year, then where do you need to be at the end of quarter one? Okay. Maybe it's, I don't know, bronze or jade or sapphire. I don't know what the rank is in your company. Right. But that's the 30 day or sorry, the 90 day goal is to hit there. So then you just break it down a little bit further. We got I got 13 weeks to hit this rank. What do I need to be doing each week in order to hit that? OK, so you got these weekly game plans, 90 day challenges, 90 day sprints that lead to massive, massive results by the end of the year. 
Okay, so on a weekly basis, this is what you got to figure out every week is personal production. And if you want to write something down, write this down. You are 20 personals away from your next major rank. Now, if you're no rank, a lot of times there's in different companies, it's different, but you may like sponsor three people and you hit a rank, sponsor four people and you hit a rank, next major rank. So you're, tw you're always 20 personals away from the next major rank. It, when it comes to, you know, the different levels of leadership, one of the levels of leadership is producer. And it is the number one level that network marketers want to skip. It's like, I'm going to put in five people and I'm going to lead my way to the top. Now, when you're doing your goal setting, this is critical. You're in network marketing. Understand that you can't skip the producer phase. It's 20 personals from major rank to major rank to major rank. Now, companies are different, but in general, you're about 20 personals away. And the people who got you to the rank that you're at are not necessarily the same people who are going to get you to the next rank. Okay, so if I look at my last organization that I built. Unfortunately, uh, the company filed bankruptcy, uh, kind of went away, but um, I was with that company for 13 years, hit the top rank in the company multiple times. It was the equivalent of uh, nine different organizations, personally sponsored organizations of over a thousand people, nine different teams of over a thousand people. And here's the whole reason why I got there is because I never got out of personal production. I kept putting people in personally. I never counted on the people in my group to get me to the next level. Now, did they sometimes? Yes, but I didn't count on it. Now, if you wanna learn how to be like hugely respected by your organization, this is something that comes up all the time. Like with a lot of my coaching clients is they're like, well, my team just doesn't respect me. You know, I've hit a decent rank, but my other leaders who are like, kind of like the same rank or a rank below, they don't listen. They wanna do their own thing. There's no respect there. Here's why, is because they know that they make up the bulk of your organization. They make up half your organization, a third of your organization, have so many different teams where they know your team knows that if they went away, you would be totally cool. OK, um, it's something where, some, you know, it's like <laughs> the bigger your income is, the bigger your rank is, the more respect that you're going to get from your organization. If you're like, well, my team's not coachable. The reason why they're not coachable is because they don't see you as a much higher level. And so I'm just telling you, here's how you do it. You stay in personal production. It's not that, I, like, I, there are so many people who are much better leaders than I am, okay? They understand, like, there's seven key skills in network marketing. I'm not the best at any of them, none of them. I'm not the best at finding prospects, not the best at inviting, not the best at presenting, not the best at, like, leadership, leadership. I'm not the best at any of it. But here's what I did. I never got out of personal production mode. It made me look like I was such an amazing leader because I'm always starting new teams. This is why, like in today's day and age, um, you know, it's a focus on being able to recruit on social media. That's why, like, I recruited 500 people, four to 500 people on social media. I'm always putting new people in. I'm always popping new ranks, always popping new teams. So th that should be a major focus for you. Okay, so personal production <laughs> on a weekly basis, every single week throughout the entire year, what is your personal production going to be on a weekly and daily basis? So that's one. Next is leadership development. Okay, it's not that you're not going to do all the leadership stuff. Just understand you don't lead your way to the top. You produce your way to the top. There's a question you should be asking yourself at the end of every week, if not every day. And here's the question. If everyone on my team personally produced at the level I personally produced at this week, would I be making all the money I want? If everyone in my team, my whole organization personally produced at the rate that I personally produced at today, would I be making all the money that I want? <laughs> Let me tell you a formula for crushing it, for getting full-time, getting to a six-figure income. Every single day, be responsible for someone joining your team. It may not be a personally enrolled person. It may be through a three-way call, a three-way FaceTime, a Zoom, but you be responsible for someone joining your organization every day. This has been like my focus. This is how I became top earner 
in all three companies I was with for 20 years is because that was just my focus. Every day, I'm going to be responsible for someone joining my team. And again, it's not all personally sponsored. The goal is not to personally sponsor the most people. The goal is to have the biggest team. But every day I'm doing calls or Zooms or something. So I'm responsible for someone joining my team. Make that your daily goal. And I'm telling you, you will crush it beyond belief. Okay. So leadership development, digging for rank. Okay. Write down digging for rank. Everyone's like, all right, I got a team. I really want to hit the next rank by the end of the month or in the next 90 days. Like, how do I do it? Yes, you need to be putting new people in, but obviously you want to leverage the organization that you have. Now, people are always tuned in to uh, the station. You've heard it before, WIIFM. What's in it for me? Now, here's what doesn't work. It's like, all right, everyone, I want to hit uh, the next rank. And so we all need to go do this. It's never going to work very well. Um, people will fall in love with you if you'll focus on them hitting rank. And so here's the way I've hit rank over the years. I've never talked to my team about me hitting a certain level by a certain time. All I've ever done, this is what I 20 year uh, philosophy is I find the hardest working people on my team, the people that are part of the teams that I need to hit the next rank. It's never about me. It's always about them. It's like digging in going, hey, what's your goal? What's your goal in the next 30 days, your goal in the next 90 days? And it's to hit a certain rank. And it's like, all right, your goal is my goal. And then it's just like, I'm still personally producing. I'm still starting new teams, but I'm focused on helping them hit their rank. And I'm going to stay accountable, a weekly accountability with them. Where are you at? And what happens is they're going to be way more excited about their goal if you're excited about their goal. Understand people want accountability. Like I launched a while back, I launched our inner circle coaching program. And I didn't understand this. Like we set people up in accountability groups. There's like a built-in accountability system. We're hiring someone who's like an accountability manager, uh, so to speak. And what I understood is like people are craving it. They want the accountability. Now, there's a fine line. There's a distinction. Be a leader, not a nanny. Okay, here's something I, I was doing a, a, a coaching call yesterday and someone was asking, and I, I put this, I learned this from uh, my friend, Lisa Grossman. Okay, it's, uh, can you guys see that? I will help you build your business. I do the first two lines, you do the second two lines. Okay, I will help you. Your job is you build your business. Okay, so by focusing and helping someone, I'm not saying I'm giving them personals, I'm not, I'm just going to be there from a mentorship, from a leadership standpoint. Okay, so that's digging for rank is you focus on like, all right, if I need to hit a certain level, who do you have in your team that's excited, and then focus and do weekly accountability with them, you may be digging another level down, they want to hit whatever it is director, well, for them to hit director, they have to have two managers on their team. So you're asking them, hey, who's the most committed on your team, and you're not just talking with your person who wants to hit director, you're talking with the two people who want to hit manager, they're way more likely to take action because you're holding them accountable because you've shown them, hey, your goal is my goal. Let's go after it together. Okay. And they're more likely to use you um, for three-way calls, for Zooms and things like that. Okay. Next is um, something from a goal setting standpoint. It is event to event tracking. Now, I don't know, like we have clients from a hundred different network marketing companies within um, our company here. So lots of people in lots of different companies, but chances are you have some type of events, right? Um, what I'm used to is quarterly events. Like if I'm coaching a high level leader or a company owner, uh, executives, it's having court, some type of quarterly events, not just a yearly event, but a quarterly event. Okay. Um, I don't know if your company does this or not, but you need to be tracking event to event. And there's three things that you want to track. So this is event tracking. Now, here's why this is important is this is what I learned my first two years in network marketing is P what it takes in order to build a big organization is a big commitment. It takes a big decision and big decisions are made at big events. 
Now we're doing a lot of Zoom, big like virtual events in Zoom. Sometimes people are doing live events now, but you can only instill so much belief and motivation into your team. When you get them around an environment where there's lots of other trainers, testimonies, things like that, it increases their belief. And so what we are as leaders is we are, we help facilitate major decisions. We help facilitate raising people's belief, belief in your company, belief in your products, and most importantly, belief in themselves. If you'll focus on building belief, that is the focus of a major leader, okay? And it is the number one word, like if there's one word that leads to momentum, it's belief. When you have a lot of people with a lot of belief, that leads to momentum. And so I'll just tell you the system um, from event to event tracking. There's three main things that you want to be tracking. The first thing is total number of people in your organization that are attending your convention, your whatever the event is. The next major event, total number of people in your organization that are attending the event. Okay, next, and this is important from a leadership standpoint, is total number by personally enrolled group. Okay, so what you're doing, and you can create, this doesn't have to be um, sophisticated, you can create a note on your phone, and you have the total number of people attending event and total number by personally enrolled group. And so if you've got a note on your phone, let's say you sponsored John, right? Who does John have attending the event? You sponsor Mary is another personally enrolled group. Who does Mary have? Like write down the names. Eventually your organization will get so big that, I mean, you have 500, 1,000 people attending events. You, you may not be able to track all of this, right? Um, but you want to know who's attending the event because these are the people that you need to be putting your time into. These are the people that you need to be working with. If someone's not attending the events, that's probably not the person that's going to lead you to becoming a top earner. Okay, so that's the second um, piece that you want to track. And then the third number that you want to track is number of personally enrolled groups. This is where you're holding yourself accountable. From event to event to event, you want to have more people attending training events compared to the event before. This is one of, like, again, one of my not so secret secrets of, you know, making tens of millions of dollars is making sure every major event, I have more people that I've personally sponsored attending the event compared to the event before. Now, people always like, get confused on leadership, right? Is you read 100 books on leadership and you get 100 different definitions of leadership. You get 100 different things, characteristics of leaders. It's always been this fuzzy thing. It's why I created the five levels of leadership that I go super deep in with our inner circle um, coaching clients is there's all this like mysticism when it comes to leadership. Here's what a great leader is. Leadership is example. Are you doing the things that your team should be doing? And if you're doing the things that your team should be doing, you're a good leader. If you're not doing the things that your team should be doing, you're not a great leader. It's as simple as that. Like we think, oh, we have to have like charisma and charm and sociability. And like, there's a lot of things that help but the like what a great leader is more than anything else is simply example and if you're tracking these numbers right if you're focusing on having more people at each event compared to the event before that's the formula for momentum because eventually you get enough people who are coming to the events making big decisions saying you know what i'm going all in Okay, if you're holding your team accountable, the total number by personally enrolled group, if you're talking to your personally sponsored uh, people going, hey, who do you have coming? Who do you have coming? Right? If you're holding them accountable, they're more likely to promote the event. And then if you have more personally enrolled groups at each event compared to the last event, if you always have new people attending the events, promise you your team sees it. And duplication is this interesting thing. Um, negative duplicates way more than positive. Like doing the right things doesn't duplicate as much as the negative. So you got to make sure you're always doing the right things. Okay. So 
Um, those are a handful of things that are really important as far as what you should be like tracking when you're creating your action plan for your goal. These are the things that you need to be looking at on a weekly basis so that you can continue to advance. Now, what is the number one reason why most people don't hit their goals? And this is something that I wish I would have knew, known many, many years ago. Um, and it all boils down to this. belief okay the reason why so many people never achieve huge success in network marketing is because they have a broken belief as it relates to network marketing if you're not sold out on network marketing if you don't have positive belief about network marketing it's going to be a struggle for you and you know there's several different categories of success in life right and um I'll talk about that in a second, but here's something that I've done is I've taken the time to create a positive belief for each major category of life. And I, I printed a, a couple of these out. I have a, a document that I review, a, a note actually, that I review. But when it comes to business, I've created my beliefs about business. See, what happens is if we're not intentional with our beliefs, we have whatever belief comes to us. And I like, hopefully you've gotten how important it is to have a rock solid belief as it relates to whatever it is you're doing. And so have you intentionally created your beliefs about business? Obviously, there's other categories of life other than business. When it comes to health and fitness, have you created a powerful rock solid belief as it relates to your health and fitness? You're muted. Sorry, the, all these little things we're doing, little things. So let me get to pro, part two. Are you loving this? So good. Yes. Yes. He's so good. Awesome. 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 Thank you so much. Awesome. Awesome. Let me get back to share screen. Let me get back to everything. Okay, we're going to go to part two now. Ah, where, where are you part two? Oh, hold on. I got to go back to the little queue. Hmm. Where are you part two? There we go. 82 minutes. Stay with me, guys. This is so good. This is where emotions the are critical. Like how many of you have been on an emotional roller coaster in network marketing? I have seen the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. I mean, I've had so many, I mean, there's been times where I lost 15 pounds because I just emotionally, I'm such a wreck. I couldn't eat, can't sleep at night. I don't want to leave the house. There was a time. And here's why I created this system is because I had to. Um, I had a business failure. I was uh, owned my own network marketing company for about five years. And we got hit with credit card fraud on a massive level. It was the same month or the month before the recession hit the US back in 2008. Um, the bank's uh, credit card companies changed the way our processing works. It crippled our company. They held hundreds of thousands of dollars. It crippled us. And I had put so much of my identity in being this young success story. It like took me to my knees. And emotionally i was broken i would drink two double vodkas to leave the house i don't hardly drink at all anymore like it's rare for me to have two drinks <laughs> i had two drinks the other night it was like woo um but i felt like at that point in my life i had to have the alcohol in order just to get by um lost 15 pounds and for the first time in my life i understood what my father must have felt when he committed suicide because I remember thinking, wow, if I have to live every day like this, life wouldn't be worth living. Like I'm crippled with anxiety, um, almost got on uh, anxiety meds. Like it was so, like, like I needed to create something. And so like I searched for like, how can I fix myself uh, emotionally? And I did this process that I'm talking to you guys about on creating 
mastery in my emotional life. So I created like, well, what do I believe about my emotional life? And, um, I, you know, it's like I had never consciously thought about creating a belief system as it related to my emotional life. And so I created this. Achieving excellence in any area of life requires high level of, levels of emotional power. My experience of reality is my own invention. Nothing is good or bad until I make it so. I feel happiness, peace, and joy or stress, anxiety, and overwhelm solely based on what I choose to focus on and believe in the moment. I define the meaning of all circumstances and I control the feelings I experience. There's nothing wrong with feeling negative emotions, but having emotional power, I'm able to acknowledge them, experience them, and quickly move on to a positive state. The main point of life is happiness and I can source happiness whenever I decide to for no reason. Nothing creates my happiness but me. No external force can rob me of my happiness. And see, when I get into a negative emotional state, which I do, like I'm human, we're all human. Like, I, here's what I hate is like, you know, the people who are like, <laughs> they're always up. They never experience any down moments. They make it wrong. Like they make you feel wrong if you're having a bad emotional state. There's nothing wrong with it. But emotional power isn't having a negative emotion. It's being able to move past them. Okay. And this is what I go through with a lot of my coaching clients. And then I create a vision. Like, what is my vision for my emotional life mastery? What is my why? Like, why must I succeed at a high level when it comes to my emotional state? And then finally, what is my action plan? Like, what am I going to do consistently to have powerful, a uh, powerful emotional state? Okay. And so, you know, I create it. I, I call this my ultimate life mastery program, right? One day I'll create a course for it. I, it's what I teach my inner circle students. Um, when it relates to business, most people, their belief is just whatever they've been programmed to believe. And it's no surprise they don't create powerful results because they don't have a powerful belief system. And so what I like, one of my beliefs is that network marketing is the best vehicle in the world for the average person to create wealth. Right. One of my beliefs is that the secret to my leadership lies in knowing that every human possesses the same blessing as me. And the blessing is that God has blessed me with a natural and unlimited ability to create success. Do you believe that you have a natural, natural and an unlimited ability to create success? If not, that may be a belief that you could borrow. OK, our success in life is largely based on the beliefs that we have for ourselves. And so the reason we don't accomplish a lot of goals is because we have a, a belief that doesn't support the goal when it comes to health and fitness. Like one of mine was that I hate cardio. That was a negative belief I had. And I realized I had over the years, I kept gaining weight, like five pounds, you know, a year or so. And I found myself about 25, 30 pounds overweight. One of my firm beliefs that was core to who I am is that I hate cardio. Now, does that belief support me getting in shape? Nope. So I need to consciously create a different belief. So I decided I absolutely love cardio and I start programming. I refuse to think anything, but I love cardio. I'm on the elliptical going, I love cardio. I love cardio, right? It took a while, but today I genuinely do. I love cardio. It makes me feel better. It makes me feel more energetic. I love it. Okay. That belief has supported me for the last decade and being in great shape, staying in peak physical form while I'm traveling all over the world, managing three kids, multiple businesses, all a crazy hectic speaking schedule. So you gotta create a powerful belief that supports whatever the goal is that you want to achieve. Now, here's the next thing that I believe is important. Now, if we go back, I may have erased it, but you know, it, it's all about our identity. So how do you shape your identity? through programming it's the things that you say about yourself now in your goal setting process is here's my coaching for you is to create an overall vision for your life okay so imagine it's december 2020 i want you to describe you don't have to do it right now but i want you to describe in detail what your life will look like one year from today in all areas of your life not just in business but in all areas of your life. Now, I am rewriting mine right now. Like I'm in the process. In fact, I've got it. Uh, I've got it right here. I'm, you know, making edits on a daily basis. As I go through my goal setting process, I'm looking at my vision. As I'm doing my vision, I'm going back to the different goals. Now, um, I kind of break it down into what I call the uh, eight Fs. 
Okay, so these are the different categories of life that I would recommend you set some goals in. So number one is your faith. Okay, this would be your level of spirituality. Um, I kind of put your emotional life um, in your faith, your character. Your character is just really the values that you consistently live by. Okay, so I kind of put that under the category of faith. Uh, next, family. These are in no particular order. Family and relationships, okay, romantic relationships. So what is your goal? What is your vision for your family and your relationships? Okay, uh, next is your field, okay? So this would be your business, your career, okay? If you've got a job, that would be your job. I'm speaking mainly to entrepreneurs here, okay? So your field, next is your finances. Okay, this is like when I'm setting my financial goals, like I have a vision for my financial life and I have individual goals that I'm setting. Like what percentage of my income do I put into investments? What percentage of my income do I put into education? What do I want my net worth to grow by? What do I want my net worth to be at the end of the year? And here's something that most people never do. I'm gonna give you a big tip that if you will do this, you will be a much wealthier person on a monthly basis i do this at the first of every month track your net worth create a net worth spreadsheet i have a spreadsheet and i have like my bank accounts um my business uh my business uh holdings my investments here's how much money i have in the stock market and forex and crypto um into real estate right i have track all that here's how much my home is valued at here's the mortgage on my home like track it all you can go online and you can get a net worth tracking spreadsheet it's not something you need me to give you any detail it's easy to find track your net worth every single month on the first of every month track it and here's what happens is i'm way more motivated all throughout the month because i'm holding myself accountable no one else is holding me i'm holding myself accountable Right. And if you'll hold yourself accountable the first of every month, you put a reminder in your phone, you track your net worth. It, like you may be like, I, I don't have much of a net worth. Well, make it a priority to increase the net worth. OK. And so here's what happens for me is I didn't do this for a long time. And I, I, like I bought a, uh, a watch cost over ten thousand dollars. This was when I was not tracking my net worth. Uh, this is like I, I don't wear it half the time um, because like I. A lot of people are like super proud of their watch, super proud of like I had a Ferrari, right? Today, I'm like, all right, I could buy a $10,000 watch or I could put this money into an investment that is going to multiply my money. I could buy a $10,000 watch or I could hire a badass business coach who can help me grow my you know, empire and that will multiply my money. Okay, and so I'm just telling you, my net worth has increased dramatically, even though here's what's crazy. Um, last year, I had the company I was with filed bankruptcy. I made less money last year than I had made in the last couple of years, but my net worth increased. My net worth went up. Why? Because for years, I've been focused so much on putting money into multiplying it, investments and coaching that allows me to make more money um financial coaching even and so my net worth has increased even though my income has actually gone down and so um that is something that please track your net worth on a monthly basis uh so finances next is fitness okay um that is um one of the categories that i you know the way i look at it is all of these affect each other and if you don't have your fitness dialed in, you are going to have less energy than someone who has it really dialed in. I mean, I have gone back and forth, back and forth so many times over the years. I know that if I stay in peak physical performance, I will succeed so much more in business. I used to have a scarcity mentality and just understand that you can live in scarcity or you can live in abundance. You can't live in both. I had a scarcity as it related to my level of fitness and my business success. I thought if I focus on fitness, I'll have to defocus on my business and I'll make less money. And I finally, like, 
I just, there was a point where the nail got enough. Like I, someone had taken a picture of me out by the pool and I saw the picture and I was kind of embarrassed. I was like, I don't really look like that, do I? And I took a picture like the side, back, front. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I've let myself get here. And it was that nail poking me like the dog where I said enough is enough. And I said, I don't even care if my business goes backwards. I can't continue to gain more weight every year. And I just decided it was like, you know what? Let me be in abundance. Let me like not just get physically fit. Let me also make more money. And I had one of the biggest travel years. I was traveling that year. I flew probably close to 200,000 miles that year. And I got in the best shape I had probably ever been in within a few months. And that year I made more money than I'd ever made. I had a record year in both. So they're not, it's not like, by succeeding in fitness, your fitness life, you're not going to succeed in business. You can have the best of both worlds. Okay. Next is your friends slash social. Okay. <laughs> if I'm honest with you guys, this is the one where I probably need the most improvement on because I'm like, I'm so passionate about my business. I'm so passionate about coaching and uh, training and so passionate about my kids. I kind of let this one slide. Like if I, Devin, uh, if my girl, if she didn't uh, help me with this, <laughs> I, I would probably almost never see my friends and do anything social, right? Um, so that's something that I need to work on, right? And so I focus on it and there we go. Next is fuel, okay? This is your personal development. I add this as a category. I, like, I, I don't see this out in you know, most categories of life. If you search this, you don't see that very often. I add it because I believe so much. I'm so passionate. I know the only reason why I am where I am is because my continued investment into myself, making personal development a priority. And then finally is fun. Okay. Um, set some fun goals for the year. I mean, one thing that I do every year is I set, I like, what are the bucket list items that I'm going to check off this year? What are the things that I'm going to do for fun? And so these are what I consider to be the eight Fs, the different categories of life. Okay. Now, um, when it comes to that vision, in creating your vision, here's what I recommend is try to encompass most of these if not all of these into your vision. And so I'm like, this is gonna change over the next week or so as I continue to develop and refine this. Um, and it's totally different than it was last year. Um, my children and I, my children and my family continue to have an amazing relationship. My children and I regularly have a blast together creating adventures and peak moments. I've been consistent with regular date nights with the kids individually, and we cherish this time together. We bought a boat and we're having so much fun on the lake creating memories. I'm in perfect health and great shape and feeling totally energized. When I look in the mirror, I'm proud of my muscular and defined body. Spiritually, I feel at peace, happy, and passionate about my life. I feel blessed to have a life where I feel abundant in every area. Devin and I are completely in love and our relationship is better than it's ever been. We're passionate lovers and feel so blessed to be so emotionally and intellectually connected. We enjoy regular getaways together to recharge and connect deeply because of the balance we have in our lives. We are so excited to be able to connect socially with others on a regular and weekly basis um, for lunches, dinners, and other fun activities. My network marketing business is a stable source of income and continues to grow steadily. And I enjoy the relationship that I have with my leaders and colleagues. I'm able to operate in my zone of genius, and I feel grateful and blessed to be part of this organization. Network marketer has become a powerful force in the network marketing profession and is widely known as the most transformational coaching company in the industry. Our students are producing amazing success stories every single week. Our coaching programs are filled and the results we are producing for our students are life changing. Our company is generating well over a million dollars per month and growing because of the incredible value and the transformation we're providing to the network marketing profession. My net worth is growing by over $500,000 every month at an increasing rate each month. And I feel completely overjoyed that I've secured generational wealth for my family, okay? Now, this is one thing that, that I coach on with my clients is having a daily power ritual, okay? It's one of the success levers. It's having something that you do on a daily basis that is gonna move you towards success. Every morning when I read this, 
It's ingraining this into my identity. I'm becoming more of this every time I read it. Why? Because everything we say about ourselves and our life becomes more true. I'm programming myself for this to be my identity. Now, there's still um, some things I'll modify with this and I'll increase it. And throughout the year, it'll increase as well. And I'm real open with you guys. Um, last year, when I created my vision statement, I read it a bunch of times and all throughout the year, and then the last couple months, I've let it slide. And then as I got back into goal setting, I was like, wow, I got to redo this thing. Um, and so uh, don't make my mistake. All, continue to refine it and adapt it all through the year. And each time you read this, it becomes more of you. And again, what we talked about earlier is if we still have, I don't know if we have it here. There we go. We talked about our subconscious goal and our conscious goal. Why do I read it every day? Because I want that to become my identity because that's I'll have natural motivation for that to become a reality. Now, uh, what I would love to do, and we are um, running short on time, but uh, if you guys have any questions, I mean, there is so much that I want to cover. I've got like two days worth of content that I, I, I want to pack into a couple hours here. Um, uh, what do I mean changing it throughout the year? I mean, things will change. Like I may decide that um, my net worth number, it may go from 500,000 a month increase to, uh, you know, 700,000. If, if, if I'm so far away, um, by the end of the year, I may pull it back a little, a little bit. I may change the wording a little bit. Sometimes there's certain words that like trigger you to have like, uh, an enhanced feeling. So, um, that's what I mean by that. Next, um, how better can we plan the 90 day campaign? Um, so here's the thing on the 90 day campaign, uh, trust yourself. <laughs> um, one of the biggest things that, um, I've had to do over the years is trust myself that I know the way you are way better than you think you are. And so don't get caught into doing it perfect. Uh, the key is this, like when you're setting a 90 day campaign, a 90 day run, it's like, all right, what am I really committed to? in the next 90 days from your network marketing business, maybe from a health and fitness standpoint, like you set that 90 day goal and then you break it down. Like I got 13 weeks to achieve this. What do I need to be doing on a weekly basis? The biggest answer is trust yourself on it. Uh, when it comes to network marketing, um, I do have a specific 90 day plan that uh, we do with our inner circle. And like we go in detail, like what are the things that you do on a pre-launch and a launch basis? Um, so that's something you, you can find a lot online about a 90 day plan and so forth. Um, so I would uh, do a little research as, uh, on that as well. But trust yourself is the biggest nugget there. Um, what CRM do I use? So I don't use a CRM with my network marketing business. I never have. But uh, with my company, Network Marketer, we use Active Campaign uh, for our emails and uh, all that stuff. Um, how can I hire you as my personal coach? Um, you can go to mattmorriscoaching.com and um, you can go there and that uh, you can read about my uh, inner circle program there. Um, let's see, what else, what else? Will there be a recording to access? Yes, we will send the recording out. How can I most effectively change the narrative about what I believe about the past, an abusive relationship? Um, so Mandy, I, here's the way to change the narrative is rewrite the narrative um, and rewrite the narrative, right? I mean, something happened and you created a meaning behind what happened and rewrite the meaning. Like, what is the blessing? If, you know, what is the blessing in the thing that happened, right? And sometimes it, it really hard. Like, I, I will tell you a, a transformational moment of my life. I met this girl, Amanda, and uh, I was at a personal development event. She gave me her card. And it said, thank God I. And I said, oh, tell me about thank God I. And she said, thank God I was uh, abused as a child. Thank God um, I was abandoned. Thank God I was raped. Thank God. And she named like two or three more really like hideous, like heinous things. And I was so taken aback. She had had so many negative things happen in her life, but she refused 
to let those negative things define her. She found a blessing as hard as I'm sure it was for her. She found a blessing in that and she was able to step into her power. So just understand that we have the ability to create whatever meaning we want based on any experience that happened and take the time to literally rewrite it, write it out, hand write it out. Like, here's what this means. And we rewrite our history. Um, we can't rewrite the things that happened. We can certainly rewrite the meaning behind what happened. Um, how deep do you track your leadership teams with goal setting? Um, so Christine, I am doing that typically a handful, like it's changed over the years. Um, you know, as you develop an organization that has thousands and thousands, um, you're working with, you know, the higher level leaders in your organization. Um, when you've got a team of, you know, 20, uh, you might track like literally everyone who's doing something. Um, because understand that we are at the beginning levels of leadership, you are the emotional hub for your organization, right? They're excited based on your excitement. They're setting goals based on you holding them accountable to setting goals. Um, and so you might be doing that for everyone who's showing up, everyone who's excited. And as it grows, you're doing that for the ones who are like hitting the higher levels, right? And then they're doing it for their organization. So there's not a hard and fast rule of how many levels. I will tell you this. Um, <laughs> I like to go deep as far as like a leader under a leader under a leader under a leader, because if you have like total, um, total belief in excitement, if this is total belief in excitement and you have total belief in excitement, um, you know, you transfer that to someone, they're not getting all of it. They're getting a piece of it, right? And then they're transferring it to their people and their people aren't getting 100% belief in excitement. And then they're transferring it to theirs, right? And so you keep like, this is not working very well, but as it goes down and down and down and down, eventually it's like almost a sliver of that belief in excitement. So what I've done over the years that's paid off in a big way is I've got someone who's like a leader under a leader under a leader, like someone who's doing something and maybe be eight levels down but they're showing up for all the trainings they've sponsored six people i'm gonna like go down and put some personal belief and excitement and training and mentorship with that person that's several levels down because here's the thing when you can go down and they start creating a big organization it lights on fire everyone above them and it locks them in okay so um there's not a hard and fast rule but you want to build relationships with the people who are several levels in depth who are displaying and who are showing the signs of leadership because in many cases and i've had this more more cases than i want uh some of the upline may quit they may go elsewhere but because i developed a relationship in depth i kept amazing leaders that would have gone otherwise if i hadn't created that relationship okay um what do you mean by you don't believe your way to the top oh what i said is you don't lead your way to the top here's what i mean by this shane is um you need to do all the leadership stuff like you need to do the training and the motivation and all that but what happens with so many people is they like they sponsor 10 people 20 people 30 people and it's like all right i don't need to produce personally anymore i'm going to motivate my team <laughs> um and i'm going to get them to go produce it's that philosophy that always leads to stagnation. And I've just, it's been a 21 year exercise. And, it, you know, it's like the biggest thing that I do when I'm troubleshooting organizations that have stagnated, it's usually personal production among the leadership that's stagnated. Now, that's not always the case, um, but I would say the majority of time, people have gotten into management mode. The biggest reason for stagnation is getting into management mode. Okay, um, how do you push motivation in a period of absolute emotional devastation and overwhelm? Um, ben, that is hard. Um, I will tell you, it, it, I did not have the tools that I have now um, when I did this. When I had my company collapse, um, it was a lot of will. It was like going to a meeting and not wanting to be there, but uh, doing the things necessary. It's literally just showing up. Now, I went through something more catastrophic after that. And because I spent so much time on my own emotional mastery, like I created my beliefs about my emotional 
um, mastery. I created a vision for it. I created a purpose. I created an action plan be behind it. And because I used that process, I went through something worse, but I had a much easier time going through it. And so, you know, it, it, it is really getting to the point where you have that emotional control. Can I give you emotional control here? No. Um, it's so funny with our uh, inner circle program. It, it's like we call it psychological fuel stacking. Right. And so every week builds upon each week, like each week builds and builds and builds. So sometimes people are in week one and we, we do our, uh, you know, Q&A and our coaching calls every week. They're like, oh, what do I do about this? And I'm like, uh, uh, week three, you're going to get it. So stick to where you're at in this week and then it'll stack like psychological fuel stacking. We created this term because it's like the way an athlete has like gets to peak performance. It's a stack of a bunch of different things. It is the right nutrition, it's the right sleep, it's the right diet, it's the right um, visualization, endurance training, strength training. You're stacking all of these things together to equal peak performance. And so um, it's a, a big stack, but um, hopefully that, that helps. Next, um, what kind of whiteboard is that? It's pretty awesome. It's a Vibe uh, whiteboard, V-I-B-E, V-I-B-E um let's see let's see we uh, how can you get yourself motivated after two years of health problems i'm finding it hard to get back into how um i used to be i'm guessing um it is um here's the thing it is you it's all creating a habit uh, i mean you will yourself uh sometimes you have to discipline yourself to create the habit. And you have to rely on discipline long enough for it to become a habit. It's kind of like when I decided that I was really gonna get in shape, I had to really focus on doing something on a daily basis and I had to will myself. It took a lot of discipline. But after I had done it a long time, then it became part of a habit. Now, the other thing is you don't wanna rely on will alone. You wanna make sure you're dialing in your belief system. So what I had to do to change my health was create a different belief system, create a powerful belief as it related to my health and fitness. That was changing my broken belief about uh, cardio, as an example, uh, changing my belief about my level of motivation, changing my belief. Like I used to say, I'm not a morning person. And I like, you could not convince me otherwise. <laughs> the reality was I wasn't a morning person because I didn't discipline my long, myself long enough to make it a habit of getting up early. So I had to like will myself to have enough discipline before I developed the habit and then I started telling myself, you know what, I'm actually better in the morning. So today I will tell you I'm better in the morning than I am at night. It used to be the exact opposite. Okay. So I uh, hope that helps. Listen, we have got a, uh, a lot more to go. So let me see. I may come back to some of this, but what I wanted to talk about here, and I just think this is hugely important. It's what I call the MLM cycle of insanity. And here's what I see happening in network marketing more than I see than I've ever seen in the past. It is a disease that plagues our industry and it is the bright shiny object syndrome. It, it is chasing the next like uh, super recruiting system. It's like uh, like the latest. Uh, Oh, what do you call it? like Instagram story campaign dancing on TikTok? like there's lots of great tactics, but the the cycle of insanity is where you're just constantly chasing the next tactic, thinking a tactic is what's going to get you to the top. A tactic alone is never going to equal success for you. And so what I have created a while back out of necessity, really, and this is what I've trained my organization on over all the years. And it's why we, it's one of the reasons why I never take credit for this, but creating a leadership development factory of massive results, $50 million earners, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of six to multiple six figure a year earners, thousands of people in my organization that have gotten full time. It, it is not just training on tactics. They are important, but if you don't have all three components, then that leads to failure. And so I'm gonna share my screen with you guys. And I just wanna run through what I call the three strategic pillars 
of success and network marketing. And let me hide this real quick. And let me see if I can hide this because I think it uh, covers the screen. And let me move this, hide video panel. Okay, so understand that if you wanna hit the top, if you wanna be a top earner, you've gotta get all three strategic pillars of success dialed in, okay? And the first strategic pillar is your skill. So I just said tactics aren't enough, but you have to have the tactics. If you don't get, uh, if you don't figure out how to get good at the seven key skills in network marketing, you're not gonna achieve your financial success. Now, here's what's crazy is, and you can take a screenshot of this, but if I were to ask most people in network marketing, 95% of network marketers, probably 99% of network marketers who have a goal of getting full-time, if I were to ask them, hey, what are the seven key skills required to get full-time? 99% of them, 95 at least, could not tell me. They don't even know what the skills are. So part of it is just knowing what the skills are. So these are the seven key skills in network marketing. It's prospecting, it's finding people to talk to, you know, in today's day and age, social media. It's why we teach our social recruiting system, right? To teach people how to predictably and consistently enroll people on social media. Basically how myself and a couple of my other million dollar earner coaches have enrolled hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people through social media. Inviting people to take a look at the opportunity, presenting, right? Understanding the psychology of presenting, following up and closing, getting people started. There's an art and science to, you know, closing in our profession. Um, skill number five, it's getting a new representative started. This is where the duplication process kicks in. Promoting events, which is building belief. And then finally training. This is your ability to teach people the seven key skills, okay? And so skills one through four, are what most people really have to dial in. It's why a lot of my coaching is like specific to the first four key skills, because if you don't get the first four skills, you don't need skills five, six, and seven. Now, if you're really good at recruiting, which is skills one through four, um, but you don't, if you're not good at skills five, six, and seven, then you have a low paying job. You're enrolling people, but you have no duplication. The money in our profession is all about the duplication. And that's where I was. I got to the point where I got good at skills one through four, but I sucked at, at duplication. And so eventually I focused on that. I got some mentorship and I figured that piece out. Um, so these are the seven key skills. And so I'm gonna do an exercise with you guys. What I want you to do is I want you to give yourself a score. Now, trust yourself in your score. Okay. Um, a lot of times people are like, well, I don't know how to give myself an exact score. Just trust yourself. On a scale of one to 10, where are you when it comes to skill mastery? Like if you've enrolled 30, 40 people, you've got skills one through four down. You're pretty good at those, right? If you um, have enrolled a bunch of people, but you haven't, like, you don't have a lot of duplication on your team. Uh, you know, you might be like a four or a five in your overall skill mastery. Now, if you've enrolled a bunch of people, 30, 40, 50 plus people, and you have tons of duplication, you might be a seven, an eight, nine, a 10, right? If you've got that piece dialed in. So where are you on a scale? And I want you to do this exercise with me. So in the chat, um, if you're comfortable sharing this in the chat, just let us know what your score is. Let me see if I can pull up the chat box. So what is your score? Now, it's important because I'm going to show you for this year what you really need to focus on. And I'm going to give you a, a scale in a second that will help you determine your capacity to lead. OK. So on a scale of one to 10, where are you? OK, let me look at the chat. All right, there we go. We got a bunch of fours, twos, three and a half, one. All right, cool. All right, next, moving on to pillar number two is your inner game. The reason why most people are not effective when it comes to the skills, making the skills work is because they don't have the inner game dialed in. One doesn't work without the other. Now, inner game should really be number one. I need to flip these, okay? So this is where you're harnessing the power of internal self-motivation. Like on a daily basis, are you naturally self-motivated or is that something you struggle with? Do you ever, are you ever like, man, I just wish I had this burning motivation. 
uh, your level of confidence, your determination, your discipline, your will to win, a core purpose that inspires you, like you know why you're here. When you dial in why you're here, why God put you on this earth, you become an unstoppable force. So um, that's part of it. Being able to beat procrastination, being very consistent with your actions. It's things like overcoming fear, courage, making bold moves, not like having crippling levels of uh, fear when it comes to prospecting because you're worried about what people think. And this is where I will tell you, when I came into network marketing, I was a zero or a one when it came to this. The phone weighed 800 pounds. I couldn't seem to get myself to do it. And I will tell you, to be real transparent, the biggest breakthroughs that my coaching clients have is when we get the inner game dialed in and they're able to finally start, like get that inner game dialed in, all of a sudden the tactics start working. They're like, man, I'm doing the same thing I was before. I'm just doing more of it. And wow, it's actually working. So on a scale of one to 10, where do you feel you are? So if you want to type that in the chat, if you're cool with sharing, uh, let us know where you're at. On a scale of one to 10, where are you at? And write that number down, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply all three here in just a second. So that's strategic pillar number two is your inner game. And understand that, you know, your, your outer world is a reflection of your inner world. If you don't get your inner world dialed in, then you're always going to suffer. Okay, next is pillar number three is your level of leadership. Okay, this is where you're, you understand what the five levels of leadership are, right? And this was, I created this because of massive confusion. I got to the top because I just did it enough to figure it out. Like I just developed unconscious competence. No one ever gave me a framework for leadership. And I just figured it out. And in our profession, almost everyone, like almost every leader in network marketing, if you were to say, hey, can you give me a framework for leadership specific to network marketing? Most million dollar earners, they can't give it to you because no one's ever really created it. So I just created something after building an organization that grew to a couple million people, um, having people come to me going like, hey, I'm struggling and I couldn't help them. I felt like a failure as a leader. I'm like, I better figure this shit out. And so I created the five levels. And so it's essentially knowing what to focus on at each level. Like, what should you be doing? Um, understanding how to move to the next level. And here's one of the most important pieces is being able to troubleshoot yourself and your people. So when they come to you and, you know, if they've got very few people on their team or if they've got 100 people on their team or 1,000 people on their team, being able to troubleshoot them and tell them, hey, here's what you need to be doing. This is what's holding you back right? There's different reasons for stagnation at each level. So do you know what those are? Okay. Having a clear leadership development system, like what are you doing within your organization to develop powerful leaders, to help them step into their power? Okay. So on a scale of one to 10, where are you at when it comes to your level of leadership? When I got started, it was like a zero or a one, like I had no clue. And I will like to be real open, like getting into like, even when I started having some success, I, I kind of got it. I was unconsciously competent, but I had trouble mentoring others. When I got this dialed in, it was like, wow, I can mentor others and help them. That's what our industry is all about, is being able to help other people rise. Now, so go ahead and write your score down. And on a scale of one to 10, where are you at? Okay. Got a bunch of answers here. Two, one, two, three, three, three. All right, we need, we got some improvement to do. Um, all right, next. And so multiply those three. So here's an example. If you're a two, a one, and a three, you multiply two times one is two, two times three is six. Okay, so your overall score, if you're a two, a one, and a three is six. Now, if you look at the scale, zero to 50, you're really incapable of leading any size team. Okay, this is why people struggle in network marketing because they haven't figured out these three pillars. It's not the latest TikTok breakthrough course. It's in, in TikTok's awesome. You should be using it. It's not the Instagram real uh, secrets. Like that's great. You should use it. We teach a lot of this stuff, right? But that's not what's going to get you full time and to six figures and beyond. Okay, if you're a 51 to 200, you're capable of leading small size teams. 201 to 300, medium size, 300 plus, large teams. If you're over a 500, you are a highly sought after leader. Now, here's the mistake many people make. 
is they're a little overconfident. They're like, oh, I'm a seven, an eight, and a uh, six, but they have four people on their team. You're not a six, a seven, and a four, or a five. Like, you're not that high. You're a little lower. Okay. Um, and this is just um, having done this, like being in the trenches for 20 years, working with so many leaders. So the key is how do you accelerate it? And here's kind of the path that I was on. I got into network marketing. Why did it take me five years to get full time? Because I was very low and I'd read books. I'd go to events. I, I took really the shotgun approach to personal development. And a year later, I'd increased by one. So I went from, uh, you know, uh, now I'm increased by one each year, a three, a two, and a four. I'm a 24, still incapable of leading any size team. My third year, like this is literally kind of like how it went for me. I increased, I worked on my skills, I worked on my inner game, I worked on my leadership a little bit. Uh, four times three is 12, times five is 60, capable of leading small size teams. Um, another year goes by, you take the shotgun approach, you attend some events, you read some books, you watch some YouTube videos, you increase by one, five times four is 20, times six is 120 still capable of leading small teams this is why people get frustrated and quit network marketing see network marketing is like any other business most businesses fail like running our network marketer organization we'll do around two million dollars in revenues this year um about 15 people on our team like it is crazy hard it, any business is crazy hard if you don't have like like it's why I invest so heavily into mentorship. I spend three thousand dollars a month on a personal life coach. I spend two thousand dollars a month on a marketing coach. I spend five thousand dollars a month on a coaching coach. Like I invest heavily. I spend about ten thousand dollars a month just on my own coaches to help me succeed. Why? Because I know the more I invest, the more I come back, the more that comes back, right? Year five, you increase by one. Six times five is thirty times seven is two ten capable of leading medium-sized teams. This is typically like getting close to or at a full-time income. See, this is why people quit network marketing is five years in and they're barely, like not even or barely earning a full-time income. Most people quit before they get to this point and it doesn't have to be this way. The reality is, if you look at the statistic, this was true when I owned a network marketing company, my year-to-year -year retention averaged 24%. 24%, so we were losing 76 out of 100 from year to year. And it, that's average at retention in network marketing is 20% year to year. Some companies have more, some companies have less, but that's on average. And I'm telling you, it doesn't have to be this way. You can increase these numbers. And I know I can't save everyone. Like, I just know that. But here's what I know, I can save you. If you're committed to making it work, there is a clear and defined path to making it work. And it's simply getting good at all three pillars. Year six, you know, you finally get to the point where you've got a full time income. And so, my friends, um, you know, this is a lot of what I wanted to share with you guys. And I'm going to stop the share and, and and get back here. And here's the thing: hopefully, that exercise, if you did the exercise, hopefully, it gives you some visibility on your capacity to lead. Coming in to 2022, I am radically committed to succeeding at the highest level in many different categories of my life. I am radically committed to helping others succeed at the highest levels. And when I was creating this, you know, the curriculum for this, you know, workshop here, and looking at my notes, it's like, what do I, what do you need to hear? Like, what is it that's going to allow you to crush it? at a level that you've never crushed it before. And I, I have my friend, I've got a friend of mine, I've known him for about 20 years, Myron Golden, and he did a training the other day and there's a piece of it that I just think I wanna share with you guys. And it is our superpower. This is our superpower. If you're writing this down, write down, this is my superpower. It's taking ownership of your results before you know the path. Taking ownership of your results before you know the path. It's deciding that you will arrive at your destination, even though you don't know how the hell you're going to get there. <laughs> okay. And if you look at, um, let me move this across here. The word decide, like if I can think like, what was it that changed things for me? It was when I decided 
that I was going to win, that I was going to take ownership of the results no matter what. And so you look at the root word of decide, you have D side, okay? D is of or from, and side is to kill, okay? It's essentially to kill off, to kill off any other option than you succeeding. So the question is, have you killed off any other option than you making $100,000 a year in network marketing, you getting full-time in network marketing, you becoming the top rank in your company. That's when things start to happen is when you make that decision, when you cut yourself off from any possibility other than your intention. And you do this all the time with meaningless things. So think about this, like going to the grocery store. If I were to decide, all right, I'm going to go to the grocery store. I decide to go to the grocery store. I don't know where my keys are right now. Um, I know I'm parked in the garage, but I'm going to have to go find my keys. I'm going to go have to like put on some warmer clothes. Um, I don't know exactly how to get there. Like there's about three or four different routes I can take to the grocery store. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to go there. Like that's not a very meaningful thing, but I decide and there's no other option than me going to the grocery store. Nothing will get in my way. But somehow when it relates to getting full-time or hitting a certain rank in your company, somehow you look at it a different way. It's like, I'm going to try, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to do my best. I, if you are, if you still are holding on to this, try, do my best, I'll give it a shot. If you have any ounce of maybe, any ounce of maybe, here's what you're saying. I'm going to build a successful business if I don't run into an obstacle that's greater than me. See, when you have anything other, but other, anything other than decide, when you have try, you're putting your subconscious to work, looking for the thing that's greater than you. It's like saying, if I call my buddy Dave and Dave lives in Oklahoma City, I go, hey buddy, I'm gonna come see you. And he's like, oh, okay, cool. When, uh, when are you gonna leave? And I go, oh, I'm gonna leave as soon as I can see the Oklahoma border. <laughs> as soon as I can see the Oklahoma border, I'll be there. Like that's the way, unfortunately, most people are looking at their network marketing business. When you decide the only thing that's impossible for you is that something would be impossible for you. <laughs> Here's what I've decided. I'm building by far the most transformational coaching company in network marketing. Like the network marketer brand, we've been slowly transitioning to the network marketer brand. We've created a curriculum that's incredible, like crazy, crazy results, right? It's impossible that something, it, that, it's impossible that something would be impossible for me to achieve that. Like no doubt it's a reality. That has to be the way that you live. And the reason why most coaches fail to deliver results is they teach tactics. It's always tactic, new tactic, new tactic, but they don't teach any level of deep thinking. It's the deep thinking, it's the internal game that makes all the tactics work. So the greatest mentors and coaches are good at rewiring your thinking. See, if you wanna be a great mentor in network marketing, get good at really teaching people how to think the right way. If I look at the transformation that's happened for myself and so many of the leaders that I've worked with over the years, it's just changing the thinking. It's having those insights and those ahas and living differently. And once you get the outer, the inner game dialed in, the outer world just like immediately, like you become a reflection, your outer world becomes a reflection of your inner world, okay? Um, and so last thing I wanna talk about really is, uh, you know, how do you develop confidence? Like sometimes you might be looking at me going, man, you seem like really confident. I wish I had that level of confidence. And let me just like break down confidence, right? So confidence, if you look at the root word here of confidence, what do you get? Confide. What does confide mean? Confide means trust. Okay. People lack confidence because they don't trust themselves. The reason why I didn't have a lot of confidence in network marketing is I couldn't trust myself. I set goal after goal after goal, action after action after action, but I never carried through. And it, I broke my trust so many times, I couldn't trust myself. And if you can't believe you, energetically, you transfer that to your prospect. You transfer that to those that you lead, okay? <laughs> Let me say this, um, you are, who you are is what you receive. Who you are is what you receive. Now, let me give you an example. If you're getting the money objection a lot, 
ask yourself this, do you give the money objection? <laughs> if you have a lot of people who like don't want to invest in joining your company, like where are you holding back with investing money yourself? If you have to think about things a lot, I guarantee you, you're getting the think about it objection quite often. It's why I had to decide at some point in my life, I decided I'm not going to live in the land of maybe. I'm going to live in the land of yes or no. And I remember when um, I went looking for my uh, transformational coach, like, I'm like, all right, I need a new personal coach. There was a guy that I've known of. He's been a transformational coach for 30 years, um, reached out. He lives here in Dallas. We met and he said $3,000 a month um, and I'll coach you. And immediately I was like, I need to think about it. That's more than I thought. <laughs> That's like $36,000 a year on just personal coaching, right? We, we do a call once a week. Sometimes we skip a week, just depending on, you know, travel schedules. And I was like 36,000 a year. Oh, I need to think about it. And here's what, like, this is the conversation I had in my mind. And then I was like, ooh, that's me being, yes, like living in the land of maybe, not the yes or no. And so I immediately, I had to choose abundance over scarcity because in that moment, I was, what was I choosing? I was choosing scarcity. And so if you're choosing scarcity, you're always going to receive scarcity. Okay, so that's a nugget that I thought was super important. Here's the other thing I want you to get is what are the two biggest expenses in your life? And I know we're going over time. Um, hopefully you guys are getting value out of this. This is stuff that, man, I wish I would have heard 20 years ago. What are the two most expensive things in your life? Now, if you have heard me do this, don't give the answer in the chat. But um, what, do you, what do you feel like in the chat? What, what are the most expensive things in your life that you pay for? Most expensive things that you pay for in the chat. Let me know. Let me know. Okay. House, house, healthcare, mortgage, house. Okay. Rent. This is what I usually get. Taxes, trips, business programs, healthcare, kids, mortgage. Awesome. Let me give you what uh, I had uh, a mentor of mine share this with me. And two biggest expenses. Okay, first off, I'm going to give you your second biggest expense. Your second biggest expense is taxes. Okay, for most people. For most people, taxes are the biggest expense. Now, I, I don't know where you live. We got people from international, so it's going to vary. But if you look at, let's take someone who earns $100,000 a year. Okay. We have federal tax. Some people have state tax. We have sales tax. We have property tax. Um, there's all these different taxes where typically you're paying 40 to 50% is just in taxes. Okay. So for most people, the number two biggest expense is taxes. So let's say it's 40%. Okay. Now there could be situations where a mortgage is more than that, but usually, you know, this is the biggest expense is taxes. That's your second biggest expense. Now I'm going to give you the first biggest expense, but um, real quick, is there anyone who, how many of you, um, does anyone know how to make a, like a really good chocolate cake? How many of you, like anyone, anyone know? Yeah. Oh, okay. There we go. All right. So uh, Mandy Harvey, let me see here. Mandy. Uh, Laura, Clara, Diana, I'm going to ask all of you, actually. Lisa, you guys can make a great chocolate cake now, if brownies count. So you're a fairly smart person. I'm a fairly smart person. I, I don't really know how to make a chocolate cake other than like I can get a box and I can make it, but you may have your own recipe. So could you, do you believe that you could teach me how to make a chocolate cake? And just answer like, like, I'm not a cook. I don't really cook. I'm not a good cook at all. I'm a good eater, but not a good cook. Could you teach me how to make a chocolate cake? Uh, of course. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So a fairly smart person can teach a fairly smart person how to make a chocolate cake. So I just want you to get that, like, when it comes to business, it, like business is like a chocolate cake. <laughs> Learning how to play the piano is like a chocolate cake. Learning how to play the guitar is like a chocolate cake. Some are harder than others, but there's a recipe. 
There's a recipe for a chocolate cake. There's a recipe to getting good at playing the piano. There's a recipe to getting good at network marketing. There's a recipe to becoming a top earner, right? We want to get that. Now let's talk about the number one biggest expense. The number one biggest expense. And before I tell you, like, if you made a million dollars a year, let's say instead of making $100,000 a year, you made $1 million a year. Well, the difference between a million and 100,000 is how much? $900,000 a year would be the difference between making a million dollars a year and $100,000 a year. It's a $900,000 difference. So let me tell you what your biggest expense in life is. Your biggest expense in life is not knowing how to make a million dollars a year. Not knowing how to make a hundred thousand, sorry, a million dollars a year. Your biggest expense is not knowing how to make a million dollars a year. Now, I heard this for the first time and I was floored. I was like, oh my God. Like at the time I knew how to make a million a year when the person gave me that. But my biggest expense right now is that is not knowing how to make $10 million a year, $12 million a year. That's my biggest expense. And so like, I was like, wow, uh, if I'm going to invest and multiply my money, I need to uh, like invest my money in figuring out how to make a million dollars a year. Okay. So in this year, like with this workshop, hopefully you guys have gotten like some aha moments. You've gotten some focus, right? What do you need to focus on? Obviously, there's the goal setting process. We talked about uh, setting your smart goals. We talked about the three parts for every goal. You have your goal, you have your purpose behind the goal, your action plan behind the goal. The reason why most people don't achieve their goals is because of what? A, a belief that doesn't support the goal. So it's consciously creating a belief, right? So hopefully you guys have gotten some aha moments. You've gotten a bit of a roadmap on what you need to focus on, the seven key skills in network marketing. If you don't have those seven key skills dialed in, you can't expect to get to a full-time income. So you know, all right, these are the skills to dial in. These are the pillars of success that I really need to focus on. And here's what I want, is you guys to come back a handful of months from now and let me know how it's going. Reach out, I'm easy to find on social media. Um, I would love to hear from you. And, you know, officially we've gone over time. The session is over, right? We are complete. Now I am, there's someone had even asked like, um, how can you coach me? Um, for those of you who are interested in that, if you want to hang on, um, I'll talk about something that we are doing. For those of you who are really radically committed to crushing it in 2022, um, I do have a Network Marketer Inner Circle coaching program. Now, I've sold courses and different things for years. Um, uh, a handful of months ago, I just decided, like, how could I serve the industry at the highest level? Like, for people who are really, really committed to becoming top earners, escaping the rat race, firing their boss, living life on their terms, like, what could I do to support them in the highest way? I knew I couldn't do it myself. Um, <laughs> I've recruited hundreds of people online. I understand, I get it, but my power, like my real skill set, is really dialing in the inner game, like rewiring yourself so that you manifest success. You become a magnet for success. It's dialing in the leadership. Like it's really figuring this out. It looks like we got some inner circle members on. Thank you guys. Love you. Um, so we've got an inner circle family. I brought on two other coaches, uh, Trisha and Ruth, who I, I looked for months and months and months. I was like, I have my own social recruiting system, but there were pieces of the puzzle that um, I kind of figured, like, here's what, you got to know your strengths and know your weaknesses. I developed a lot of unconscious competence when it came to recruiting on social media. So I needed like a couple people who not only had done it at the highest levels, but knew how to teach it at the highest levels. So we came together to create our social recruiting system to basically distill down everything that we do. Now we teach that in the inner circle. And uh, what I'll do here, and again, this is over, this is like, I'm, please don't think like you need to do this. You can take what you learned in the uh, goal setting workshop go crush it right this is for only those of you who are like super interested you want additional coaching um i'll talk about it here and i'll just share my screen real quick let me um 
share this with you guys. And I'll just run through this real quick. Um, this is not for everyone. Again, this is only for those who are like really, really committed. It is um, an invitation only kind of thing. Um, let me see. All right, we are screen sharing. So here's what the inner circle is. This was the whole intention is creating the number one transformational coaching program in network marketing. There are, listen, there are amazing coaching programs out there that teach really good tactics. There are really good coaching programs out there that teach inner game stuff. I've never seen anything that teaches the inner game, the external skills and the leadership. I've just never seen it. And I've been around, I've been in the industry for 26 years. Um, I know all of the top coaches and trainers in the profession. I just never seen it. And I said, man, if the industry needs something, it's how to really dial in all three pillars of success. And so um, this is mastery level coaching in all three pillars, external skills, inner game and leadership and influence. Now, here's the deal. It is not for the faint of heart. This is not for those of you who are like, this is not a course. This is like extreme accountability. This is, you're gonna be put into accountability groups. Uh, there is a weekly coaching call with me, um, Trisha and Ruth. There's uh, Q&A calls, um, which really ends up being a transformational call. This is about shortening your learning curve from 20 years down to eight weeks. It is intense. Okay, so don't apply if you're not ready for something intense. Now, this is the last opportunity. Uh, we've been in kind of beta the last several months. We're testing it out, uh, figuring out. We just um, added a major, major component. Those of you who have been in the inner circle, I'm sorry that uh, this is something new that we're adding. Uh, I know you guys can let me know in the chat that you got value, but uh, we're making it even better. And we're going to increase the price January 1st. And so it's not cheap. This is not like a few hundred dollars program this is this is expensive and there's a couple different options um depending on your needs but um you know there's a pre-training so there's going to be like a one one to two week period where you're in a pre-training you get access to a coaching platform there's bots that help hold you accountable there's a support system in place um access to a private community so you're in there with other people who are radically committed the only way you get in the inner circle is if you're really radically committed um there's an orientation video i go through the ground rules um you, there's a meet your coaches video you get to know ruth and trisha and their story my story um there's several coaching assignments I didn't expect this to be true, but even in the pre-coaching, people are like, oh my God, I had a major breakthrough just from the pre-training. That wasn't even intentional. Um, you get our daily power rituals. One of the levers of success is things that you do on a daily basis that wire your mind right and that create success. And so we give you uh, the first couple of daily power rituals. And then as the program builds, there's additional power rituals. Okay, um, you're assigned into accountability groups, so you meet with a small group on a weekly basis, and this is what we've added to the program, a client success manager. So uh, we have a young man, I actually have been coaching with him, he was mentored by my mentor uh, when it comes to transformational coaching. Um, we are uh, bringing him to a higher level role, and so his job and the way he's compensated is based on your success. I've never, ever seen any coaching program in the world where someone's compensation is tied to your success. See, here's the great thing about network marketing is when you join network marketing, your sponsor makes money off you. Uh, the people above them make money off you. So you have this mentorship network, right? I understand, and Ruth and Tricia, they understand that our, the success of our program is based on us being successful, but what if we could add a life coach to the program who you have regular calls with where his job is to make sure that you're pulling everything you can out of the program. So you have your own client success manager. His name is Anthony. Uh, eventually, we'll, we'll have to bring on others, but uh, I'm telling you, he is amazingly, amazingly good. He's created huge breakthroughs for uh, many of our uh, students who've completed the inner circle. And so I'm going to skip through this very very fast but um i'm going to just go through week one through week eight a framework a tangible framework for mastering the inner game see here's the thing is people use the shotgun approach to personal development the shotgun approach is a slow and difficult path so we give tangible frameworks where you have like okay this is what i do here's how it works so everyone always said like what i heard for years is success is about the person that you're is attracted by the person you become yeah, but how do I become that person? 
We tell you exactly how to become that person. Uh, accelerated learning strategies, um, the duplication myth. So I break down what duplication really means, what you really need to focus on in network marketing. Uh, the number one factor that determines how successful you'll become, the number one strategy for accessing power, not a dictatorial power, but personal power, control over your own situation, the success path framework. I went through some of that here. Um, I go really deep into that. Uh, the secret to internal self motivation, how to rewire your mind for success. Um, we go through the whole psychological fuel stacking. So week by week by week, we are stacking um, the psych psychological processes that wire the inner game right. Uh, you learn the five golden rules for building a personal brand in week two. We go through the foundation for a social recruiting system, the care method, how to tell your story powerfully, how to connect with your audience. Um, how to set up your profile, pros and cons of using a Facebook page versus a profile, um, the most important strategies for becoming a true transformational leader. Uh, that's what excites me, and I, I talk about that process. Um, a solid understanding of human behavior. See, if you understand why people do the things that they do, you can get them to do them, right? Um, if you want to learn how to really motivate people, it's not the rah-rah motivation that many people think uh, like a motivational speaker has. No, it's understanding human psychology. When you understand human psychology, it's almost like you're almost like a ma magician. And if you've ever seen a lot of what we do is like a magician where a magician, like how many of you have ever seen a magician do a trick and you don't know how they do it. And then they do it again and you still don't know how they do it. And then they show you how they did it. And they're like, oh my God, like, how did I not see that? A lot of our coaching is exactly that way. Uh, you will have so many aha moments. Um, you'll get a new daily power ritual. We go through the process for identifying your ideal prospect. This is something like the mistaken belief in network marketing is that everyone is your prospect. And, and I've heard it for years. I said it for years. Like everyone should be in network marketing. And that's not, not reality. <laughs> network marketing is not for everyone. Here's what you want to get to is when you're through your social media, through your presentations, through the things that you're doing, you want people to be like, wow, they're talking directly to me. If at any point in like any of my stuff that you've seen over the years, if you felt like, wow, he's talking directly to me, that's by design. Okay. Um, how to, uh, the four biggest mistakes network marketers make on social media. Most network marketers are making this. Um, how to become a professional marketer, how to have your prospect wondering, how do they know me so well? Uh, and, and this a persuasion framework that I've used to generate millions of dollars online, and I've used it in my network marketing business. It is a specific framework. Like people always want to know, like the secrets to persuasion. I'm going to give you what I believe is the most powerful. I spent $15,000 to learn this at a uh, three day event with an incredible like uh, ninja and persuasion. And then I broke it down on how to use it in network marketing. It's very, very cool. Um, a character development system, how to attract the right people like a magnet, um, how to stay in peak physical shape, um, the care method, what to post, what not to post, how to use a call to action, engagement posts, um, how to break through decades of negative programming. Uh, I mean, you get, there is so much value into this. If you want, you can just take pictures of this, um, how to never run out of post ideas, how to crush it with live videos, um, how to use Facebook and Instagram stories, reels, the right way to use hashtags, how to use Facebook groups. Like if it's crickets on your social media, um, what do you want to do specifically within groups? in order to get a bunch of people following you. And so we go through that, um, how to follow up with leads and messenger, how to peak interest, uh, the cash method for recruiting, several specific scripts that you can use, um, the most powerful leadership framework in network marketing, the five levels that I showed you guys earlier, uh, but dialing in each level, um, how to advance from one level to the next, how to troubleshoot you and your team, a 10 point event promotion blueprint, mark my words, the, the top money earners in network marketing are the best promoters. I will show you how to be a masterful promoter when it comes to promoting events. Um, an event to event tracking system, the duplication system, the six tiers of exposure, how to move from one level to the next, what your highest uh, tier is from an enrollment ratio standpoint. Uh, number one key to winning in life that I learned from a mentor of mine that does over 100 million a year, uh, psychology of closing, 
uh, how to handle objections, the amazing reason people say no. I mean, you get there is like tons and tons and tons. This is taking 20 years of my network marketing experience and the other two coaches and giving it to you in eight weeks. Now you have lifetime access to all the content. Um, and so you can rewatch this at any time. So it's an eight week structured program. Uh, every week builds on itself. And at the end, a lot of times people are like, wow, this was so much. I want to watch it again. You can go watch it as many times as you want. Um, you're going to learn how to increase from week to week, a quarterly review process. Someone had asked, like, what do you do on your quarterly stuff? Like, I break all this down. Um, I go through my BVPA framework, the ultimate life mastery, where I talk to you guys about dialing in belief systems in every major category of life. I show you exactly how to do that. Um, how to create a life filled with meaning and fulfillment, happiness, joy, like how to break through decades of negative programming um, to really become the ultimate version of yourself. Now, every week is gonna include a coaching session with myself and uh, Ruth and Tricia, live Q&A coaching uh, calls with your coaches. Uh, I'm on almost every one of these, every once in a while, like once every couple months, I might miss one because I'm traveling or Ruth and Tricia might miss one, um, but every week, we have accountability group sessions, weekly strategic assignments, access to the inner circle community, and access to Anthony, your client success manager. If you want to apply, you can just go to mattmorriscoaching.com. Uh, there's a process you go through. You can read a little bit more about it. Um, and then you can book a time with my director of coaching. Now, again, this is not for everyone. This is only for those of you who are really, really committed. You can't, like, it's not a deal where you can, like, join the inner circle and not show up you need to be here this is we're going to hold you accountable this is like i am so serious i don't care about your money what i care about is you producing results and so um mattmorriscoaching.com and we may have let me just see i know we've got some of our uh, inner circle members on let me stop the share for a second um did i see nina nina are you on let me search for you nina johnson let me see if you'll unmute nina would you mind i see you on um i see you commented earlier would you mind hopping on and just kind of sharing what your experience has been um it was absolutely incredible um so i want to start with this right here in june of this last summer this was my vision my six month vision board and we had about just under 300 people on the team. I had two frontline leaders and I had these huge goals. And Matt, when the first time I heard you talk, I was like, you are unlike any other network marketer coach out there because a lot of them, they talk in circles. But when I hear you talk, you actually go straight. You know, you cut me deep <laughs> and um, started, you know, I started with the first inner circle, which started in August. And our company came out with this huge incentive that in September, if you hit, you know, a certain rank and you hit um, a certain amount of personal, you know, uh, group volume, that you would be able to uh, have this all expense paid trip to Turkey and all this kind of neat stuff. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to do this. And I had the fundamentals of our business, right? We all know the fundamentals. I've been in network marketing for 18 years and I had the fundamentals, but I didn't have the right mindset. And you really just, through this whole program, really just kicked it up a notch, especially with those daily power rituals. You know, it got me in such a great habit. So I was like, this is happening for September. It is happening. And because I got into these wonderful habits that you, you teach us, um, even though I had the most traumatic experience of my entire life, my two-year-old daughter actually had a drowning incident except on, a, on Labor Day weekend. And... Um, she survived, thank God. Um, even though we went through all of that, I missed that week. That was on Monday. I missed that week, but I was able to watch the replay. Even through all of that, we had a new website launch and there were so many glitches and everybody was freaking out around the whole company, but my team stayed so positive because I was able to pass on these amazing gems that you gave us, right? And September, it happened. We had, you know, I... I added two frontline leaders, uh, so it was a total of four. We had over $100,000 in group volume, which is huge for the type of company that we are. And 
you guys, there was nothing like standing in the middle of this huge arena, huge stage with top leaders um, and realizing I was standing with our, our, um, our corporate person that helps us and realizing that I completed at the end of October, October 30th, I completed everything on this list, every single thing. And it's absolutely incredible. I'm still a top leader. I have the four frontline leaders. I'm a top 100 leader in the company out of 750,000 people. And you guys, you just have to be willing. I'm not saying it's because, you know, you have, um, he gives us all these things, but it's not because he gave me anything. It's because I chose to say, I'm ready to do this. I'm ready to do these things. It's not easy work. It is a lot of hard work, but it is so worth all the hard work. So oh worth it. Gosh, that is so awesome. I just want to acknowledge you because like going through what you went through, um, you know, having the drowning accident, like I remember that happening and uh, man, you, you literally just won't let anything stop you. And so I just want to acknowledge you for that. Um, and, like, and like you even said it, like it is, uh, you did it like you showed up and that's the thing that I love about the program is you know we talk about coming out of the inner circle being able to enroll uh, you know two three people every week and we've got so many people doing that and you know hitting their goals winning trips like rank advancements and uh, uh, you gave me goosebumps when you were talking so uh, yeah, we, and we have over 800 people on the team now and that uh, was to know oh my gosh that's hot that's hot thank you so much <laughs> I appreciate thank it thank you Matt Awesome. Uh, Javi, I see uh, Javi, you're on. You were one of the first people to go through the inner circle. I'm going to ask you to uh, see if I can unmute you. Um, if you are still on, Javi, I would love to hear from you. Are you with us, brother? Yes. Hey, Matt. How are you? Can you guys, can you guys hear me? Yeah, perfect, man. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, thank you very much, man. Super, super excited to be part of these, uh, these goals that we need to do and super excited to have this kind of knowledge from you because i've been following you for a long time and when i jumped to this inner circle program let me tell you it was the best investment i haven't done in my entire life you know i've been investing money as crazy trying to find the next tactic like you said but definitely you know i mean the inner circle was something that taught me the the basis of the basis where you need to be focused on where you really need to work to achieve the result and it was so amazing that on the week number five i mean i only have one agent in my team left. Uh, everybody left me. I was just myself in this gear. And I, every single Monday after the class, I would jump in another Zoom with her to start, you know, hey, I learned this today. We want to be focused on this and that. In five weeks, we have a breakthrough in the, in the team. We went from almost nothing to 12, almost 15 agents in three days. And we did about $25,000 in group volume that, that, that month. And that creates something huge, changed change my perspective of everything and believe in this. And I, I continue to work on that. And you don't going to believe that the exact same thing just happened this weekend, last weekend. In two days, another agent that came in out of nowhere, we started just really talking about the basics, the, the, you know, the actions, the feelings. And then she was, oh, my God, she was completely disconnected. She did 12 in two days. 12 agents wow. enrolled in two days. Uh -huh. This is the second time this happened. And, and you told me that it's going to be up and downs and don't get it right. But you start going down, it's going to get the pond that you're going to explode. And I know it's coming, man. This thank you. Thank you, you, Trish. All of you guys, because this, this inner circle is changing my life altogether. Awesome, brother. Thank you. And uh, man, I just, uh, again, you showed up, you did the work, you were, here's what happens is you get out of it what you put into it. Javi, you showed up on the Q&A calls every week, you showed up in your group, but like, when you do the work, it actually works, like having the frameworks. And he said something really important is a lot of what we're teaching, and I say this over and over, Yes, the training is for you, but the training is not just for you, it's for your team. And so Javi took the information and he started sharing it with his organization. Um, and so, um, you know, that's a big piece of it is it's like, I don't need all the glory. Like I want you to take what I teach you and teach your team so that you can step into another level of leadership and have these kind of results. And so I was so uh, like, so exciting to hear after, what was it, four years, you had your best uh, best year? And, uh, yeah, I mean, four years in this industry, 
Yeah, four years, and actually, this is my fourth company. I, and the three previous ones, I never have anything big. This is the first time ever that I start seeing results after results. And most important, now my wife is even more excited. You know, <laughs> she was no support at all, and now she's all in. <laughs> there you go. That's the uh, best way to get your uh, spouse and your family enrolled is go create some results. So uh, thank you guys for sharing. We are way over time. I'd love to have, I know there's a bunch of uh, Inner Circle members who have hopped on, but uh, listen, we, we're way over time. So hopefully you get, we could go through many, many stories of people who are just crushing it, um, you know, breaking through new records, uh, achieving their goals. And so listen, if you feel like it's right for you, if you feel called to do this, if you know this is is the kind of coaching that you really need, you can just hop over to mattmorriscoaching.com, mattmorriscoaching.com, and you can apply on there. And if you are welcomed in with my director of coaching, then we'll uh, welcome you with open arms to the Inner Circle family. So listen, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for right. sticking with me. I know we went over time, but uh, so awesome to be able to uh, you know, hopefully make uh, an impact in your lives. So love you guys. And we'll see you on another walk workshop sometime soon. God bless everyone. Take care. Awesome. Awesome, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, being a part of this and really just challenging yourself and growing yourself. Um, it's been an honor and privilege to share these teachings with you. I am Hoping to, um, well, I know I will be bringing these to my team um, and some of this personal vision work and the psychological fuel stacking that we're doing. And it is challenging, trust me. Um, and, and with uh, all kinds of traveling that's been happening, it's still been my focus. And uh, when I get behind a little bit, the beautiful part is it's recorded and it's been great for me. I get it. It's not for everybody. It's just where I am at in my life and I'm ready to step into my leadership even more. Um, I just feel like I've been very stagnant over the last couple of years. And, um, and I know that I need to grow myself. So um, it, it's constant growth. You don't stop at being a master pro 10 and growing yourself. So um, I'm, I'm, it, it's, it's resonated with me. And I thank Lourdes Rosas for introducing this to me. Um, and I was a little shy about it. I didn't have any time to really think about it. She just like got on me and said, let's do this together and be accountable. And so maybe it'll be for you at some point in time, if not now. Um, but um, I'm, I'm looking forward to being a different me by the end of 2022. Awesome. So, Great job, Marissa. Thank you so much for everything. God bless. Oh, oh you're welcome. You're welcome, everybody. Okay, I'm going to stop the live stream, I think. I think I just have to end it all because it's not doing anything when I hit the three dots. So I'm going to end it all. Happy New Year, everybody. Um, that workbook is phenomenal. Um, and do it and do your personal vision and then write it in the in the future and write it like you mean it. And don't hold back. Don't be shy about how amazing you are. What is your dream you and look at it and feel it and be it and and just jump up and down and, you know, do the do the whole Tony Robbins stuff. You know, I'm the voice like really get into your physiology and then and he tells us to go take a walk in nature for 15, 20 minutes before you sit down and do this and and write it down, write it with a pen and paper in a notebook. Right. So anyway, lots of love to you all. Thank you. And thank you so much, Marisa. Thank you. Amazing. You're an amazing mentor and uh, love everything you give to us. So thank you. Well, thank you. I love you Amen. all. You're amazing too. So each and every Amen. one of you, those I know, those I don't know, those I will know, um, you know, we just, we're all here to lift each other up. Thank you, Pose, for all that you do for all of our teams and helping us grow ourselves. So we thank you. We love you all. How many of you had a lot of notes today? Yes, holy yeah. cow. I'm like, oh, so good. So this is stuff that we will use in all of life, in all of our goals, in our families. So just get to writing. And like, I love how he said that he just keeps working on it and working on it and working on it and fine tuning it. And speaking, I was listening to a bunch of stuff with Grant Cardone yesterday. It was very similar about, you know, um, saying, you know, these things several times a day, but he also writes it um, uh, twice a day. So I love how he, you know, is reading it because speaking it out is huge, 
But then there's also the brain works in ways when we write handwrite, not type, but handwrite. So if we have certain specific ones, it could be really quick, take 20 to 30 seconds in the morning and the evening. It's just so darn good. And I'm just so grateful, Marisa, that you said yes to this, that you decided. And that I love how he said, because I look back into, you know, some of our biggest goals. We don't know how the heck we're going to get there, but we just know it's going to be done. Right. So that, I mean, he proud on that so much. So don't get in our heads, right? We just don't get in our heads and just make that short-term goal. Then we go to the next, then we go to the next. And then let's just have, let's commit to having a lot of fun. And you guys, if you want to watch this again, it is in one person um, Facebook. So uh, Maurice, if you want to pin it in the announcement, so it's easy for people to always have, sure. if they ever want to go back or have some team go in there, you can tag them. They can watch it tonight. Um, but I think we could all say this was definitely worth our two and a half hours of the day Absolutely. for sure. So. Absolutely. And, and you know, one of the things I'm working on right now, one of my assignments for this week was writing affirmations down, you know, I am, but then also putting the, doing another assignment on top of that stacking where you're asking your question, why am I this? Why am I this? Why am I this? And then at night you are um, using, you can use audacity app. I haven't used it yet, but, or record yourself and listen before you go to sleep out loud, like in earphones mm. or whatever about how <sighs> you are. And, and, yes. you know, it just, he, he's phenomenal with this. This so psych, psychological fuel stacking has been a game changer and not very easy to do. I had to write my future eulogy as well. Yeah, that was hard. <laughs> I really love myself. I'm going to have a party, though, when I go. <laughs> Amen. Me too. <laughs> All Let's right, everybody. Party. All right. Love you. Thank you. You should love yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bye, bye. Everybody here. Yeah, absolutely. Love, love you guys. guys. Love, love you. 2022.